What's up party people? My name is Daryl Wilson and today in this video I'll be showing you all how to create an e-commerce website with WordPress step by step. Now me and my team have been spending weeks making this e-commerce tutorial so both beginners and all WordPress users can create professional e-commerce websites that look great that you can fully customize. In this video you will also learn how to use the Elementor page builder and all of its features which is currently the number one most popular drag and drop page builder for WordPress. We've also prepared a detailed marketing guide to drive traffic and help you get your first sale for your e-commerce website all for free. So sit back and relax and let me show you guys what we will cover today in this e-commerce tutorial. All right, so today I'll be showing you step-by-step -step on how to create an e-commerce website that looks really professional yet modern. And the great part about this video is you don't need to know any sort of coding or HTML because we will be using a drag and drop builder that makes it really easy to build your e-commerce website. And as you guys can tell, this website looks great and you will also receive this template for free just for watching this video. So today I'll be showing you how to design and customize every part of the website to fit your business needs. Now you can sell any type of products you want on your e-commerce website. You can sell clothes, fashion products, jewelry, animal supplies. You can sell anything you want on your e-commerce website with no restrictions. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create your e-commerce website with WordPress and Elementor. The popularity of WordPress is growing. WordPress now powers more than 42% of the entire internet, powering more than 500 million websites worldwide. In fact, WordPress is used by popular websites like Mercedes-Benz, Walt Disney, PlayStation, and even the Angry Birds. So you will be using the most popular platform to build your e-commerce website. Elementor is the leading drag and drop page builder for WordPress. It is now used on more than 5 million websites worldwide because it's super easy to use and completely drag and drop. So after learning Elementor, you can pretty much make anything with WordPress. Here are some users who watched my previous videos and have now created their own personal e-commerce business using the same page builder and platform that I'll be showing you how to use today in this video. So with all that said, let's take a closer look at the website that I'll be showing you how to make today in this video. All right, so this is the e-commerce website that I'll be showing you guys how to make today in this e-commerce tutorial. I'll also be giving you guys the demo images and this whole layout for free to help you guys follow along in this e-commerce tutorial. Now at the top left, we have our logo and this is where you can put your logo for your e-commerce website. If you guys don't have a logo, don't worry about it. I'll be showing you a really cool resource on where to get a logo for your e-commerce websites. And then here we have our pages, you know, like the home, the about, the contact, the my account and everything. And then on the right side, we have the customer login where they can log in and see their orders. And on the right side, we have this uh, cart where they can click on it and view the items in their cart. Now here the user can click on this and they can go directly to their account dashboard. So from here, the user can see their recent orders. They can manage their shipping and their billing information. And they can also update their payment methods on your e-commerce website. Next, we have our landing page, and this is just a really clean landing page. We have this nice image here to reinforce what we're selling. We have this text where you can, you know, change this to big sale or whatever you want to change it to. And then we have this shop now button where users can click on this and go directly to their, uh, you know, to the shop page. And then scrolling down here, we have product categories. So let's say, for example, you have product categories like men's, women's, and children's. You can categorize your products where if they click on this, they'll be redirected to that specific product category. So I'll show you how to set that up. Let's go ahead and keep scrolling down here. And then we have just our basic products. So this is just our products that we are listing on our sites. So, you know, I'm selling leather jackets, green shirts and stuff like that. So you can kind of see how users can, uh, you know, click on this and then they can add this to the cart and then this will update in their carts. So next we have testimonials and testimonials are very important because this gives you social proof, letting people know that like, you know, you're not a scam and, and people are actually buying on your store and stuff like that. So those are always good to have on your sites. And then here I just added this like flash sale. So if you want to run sales where you're basically telling people that this is only good for a specific amount of time, uh, I went ahead and added that. So I'll show you how you can, you know, add this for your e-commerce website and then keep scrolling down here. We have just some icons. So these could be like your brands. Like for example, if you're selling Nike shoes or Adidas or uh, Pumas, I don't know if they sell those anymore, but uh, you know, you can, you know, you can add those to your store, you know, just to give them an idea of the brands that you sell. And then below that, we have this video where users can click on this and have a pop-up of a video, you know, to display your products and showcase them a little bit more in detail. 
And then here we have some, some icons just to reinforce the buyer, you know, like money back guarantee, uh, delivered in 24 hours, you know, free shipping, you know, all, all that good stuff. And then at the bottom here, we have this really nice footer where we have this, um, you know, our footer at the bottom with our subscribe box. And then we have this Instagram widget where we have our Instagram here where they can click on this and go directly to our Instagram. And then we have these credit cards here at the bottom just to add some more, you know, style and decor to the website. Now I did mention that we are using a drag and drop builder to build out your e-commerce website. So for example, if you wanted to make changes to your e-commerce website, you would just click on the text and then type it in. So here I'll type in big sale today. And then I'll scroll down here. On the left side, we'll have these elements tabs and we can drag and drop these elements onto these columns. So for example, I can drag and drop this heading text and then change the text. And then we can keep dragging in elements. So I will take an image module and here I can put in images. So if you have images that you want to upload to your website, you can just insert them directly onto your site and then keep dragging and dropping elements onto your e-commerce website. So here I'll drag in a button. Also, for those of you who have YouTube videos, you can use this video elements and then drag it directly on your website. And then users can go ahead and play videos right on your e-commerce website. Now your e-commerce website will be fully optimized for all devices. So we'll first optimize your website for the desktop and then we'll optimize your website for all tablet users. And lastly, we will optimize your e-commerce website for all mobile devices. So anyone visiting your website on an Android or an iPhone will have a good shopping experience on your e-commerce website. Now this demo website is available in the description below of this video. So if you guys just want to go ahead and check it out, you're more than welcome to like here is the about us page where we're gonna go ahead and uh, walk you through on how to set up an about us page on your site. You know, it's really clean and it lets people know what your site's all about. And I think when people see about us pages, they get more connected to your brands and saying, all right, you know, these guys work really hard creating this product and you know, we really appreciate that. And then here we have the contact us where users can go ahead and send you messages, which I'm sure you guys will love support, you know, e emails, but uh, you know, everyone has to have it. So you can put your, uh, or your visitors can put their name, their email, and then send you a message. And this will go directly to your email inbox. And then here we have a address of where we are located and some frequently asked questions. This is really good to have because this can actually save time with emails because, um, you know, maybe they're asking about a specific product. You can just say, yeah, the product is, you know, this, or we offer refunds or we don't offer refunds. So you can add this to your, um, you know, your contact page. And then here again, we have the footer at the bottom of the website. So next, let me show you guys our shop pages. Now we have created four free shop pages for you guys. So no matter what kind of niche you're in, there's definitely something for you. Here's our first shop page and we added these products right here. And then we have our favorite products on the right side. And they're kind of highlighted here to kind of maybe increase uh, engagements for your e-commerce store. We also have our best selling items. And then below that, we keep scrolling we have product categories. So let's say for example, you know, they just didn't find out what they're looking for. They couldn't find it. Not to worry. We finished it off with some uh, product categories here at the bottom. The next shop page is shop page four, where users can just get greeted with this banner. And if they click on shop now, it'll take them down to the products. And on the right side, we added just a lot of upsells and testimonials to kind of increase engagements for your store. Uh, you know, maybe people, they see these testimonials from Twitter or something and they're like, oh man, that's cool. I want to go buy it now. You know, <laughs> like who knows? Like you never know, you know? And then here we have this subscribe newsletter where they can uh, subscribe while they're shopping on your store. So it's a nice shop page. The next is shop page three. So this is the next shop page and this is more geared for people who have a larger store. So I'll go ahead and click on shop. Now on the left side, we have filters. So we have filter by price. We can filter by color. They can also search for products if you have a very large store and they can also search by product categories here on the left side. And then scrolling down here, we have some product categories. So this can be something like, again, like, you know, women's children, men, or iPhones or something. So they can shop by product categories by just clicking on this and shopping, you know, directly for categories on your sites. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next page. So next we have shop page one, and this is geared more for uh, directly selling certain products. So here we're just kind of showcasing these products. We're really trying to upsell them saying these are our best products. We have how many were sold. 
And then we have these icons here reinforcing it, saying like, yeah, delivered in 24 hours, money back guarantee. So you can just add your products here and just kind of highlight them on your e-commerce websites. And then below that, we just added some more, more products here below that, just in case that they wanted to keep browsing around. Okay, so now that I showed you guys the shop pages, let me quickly show you all the product page. Let's go ahead and click on one of these products. And this is one of the product pages. And on the left side, we have like the title of the product, we have the price, and then we have some description. We also have like SKU numbers and the categories that are in. And in the middle, we have the product where we can kind of get like a better view of it. And then also if you have different images of the product, you can add more for the product gallery. On the right side, we added this little upsell banner where users can kind of take a look at it saying, all right, buy it with confidence. You can talk about your refunds, free shipping, cash back, and also support. And then also we added some social icons here uh, right below that. And then below that, we added some description for the product and just additional information. And this could be something like, you know, made in, you know, India or made in America. And then below that, we have related products where we have products that are related to the current product that they are viewing. Next, we have the original product. So this is just another product layout. And this is something a little bit more ideal, right? So we just have like the title of the product. We have the price. We have some description. You just can just click on add to the carts and then just add the product directly to their cart. And then they can share this as well to their favorite social network. And then below that, we have some more information, like additional information. Uh, we can see reviews for the product and just some general description about the product and stuff like that. And then we finish it off here with the related products there at the bottom. So now that we added this product to the cart, let's take a look at it. Let's go ahead and click on view cart. So this is the shopping cart, and this is a custom shopping cart that I'll be giving you guys for free in this video. And we have these steps, you know, we have step one, the shopping cart, step two, checkout, and then step three, order complete. And then below that, we have a list of all of the products. Now you guys can also create your own coupon codes and you can apply the coupon codes and give them like a 50% discount or a 20% discount or whatever discount you want. I'll walk you guys through how to create coupon codes uh, for your e-commerce websites. And then below that, we have like these credit cards and, you know, SSL protection, just to kind of, you know, reinforce the buyer about uh, our store. And then I'll click on proceed to checkout. Okay, so this is the last step and this is the checkout step. So you'll see that uh, we are currently on the checkout step and the next step is order completes. And if we scroll down, we'll see our billing information on the left side. So here they can input their, you know, their name, they can put their address. They can also put their phone number and email address. They may also ship to another address, like if it's like their girlfriend or something and they want to send it to someone else, they can always do that. On the right side, we have the payment method. So they can pay with PayPal or credit card. So here I'll enter in my credit card, my real credit card. I'm just kidding guys, it's, it's, it's a test, you know, it's a test mode, you know, I, I do get emails from users saying uh, that I left my real info on YouTube and I was like, no, it's in test mode. So once the user inputs their card information, uh, they'll then click on place order. And that's it. So now your customers will be brought to a thank you page. And here they can see what they've purchased, uh, the product, and also they can see the tax and shipping and total. Now, once the user has purchased a product on your e-commerce website, both parties will be notified via email. So for example, I'll go to my email. So your customers will automatically get a confirmation email notifying them of their purchase, where they will see what they bought and they can see their billing and their shipping address. And you will also get an email notifying you of a new order. So it'll tell you that someone has purchased something on your website and then you might wanna ship the product to their shipping address. Well, party people, I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. You know, it's a really clean e-commerce website. It's really simple to navigate. It comes with a free starter template and we'll be making this website with free tools. So on a more personal note, guys, you know, off the script and everything, we worked so long and hard on this video. We spent weeks making these starter templates and also creating an outline that's step-by-step. -step. That's also really easy to follow. So I really do hope you guys enjoy this video. We've also created this tutorial for both free elementary users and pro users because we realize not everyone wants to upgrade. So we will be showing you how to use elementary free version, yet we'll also be showing you how to use the pro version just in case you guys decide to upgrade. So you guys ready? Let's go ahead and create your e-commerce website with WordPress. So we are going to build your new e-commerce website in six simple steps. And we will use this checklist throughout the video to help you follow along in this e-commerce tutorial. All right, so for step one, we will get our domain and web hosting. A domain is the web address for your e-commerce website. So for example, your e-commerce website.com or 
PetsRUs.com, then we'll install WordPress onto your domain and then adjust the general settings. Step two, design the website. We will design and customize your new e-commerce website with the Elementor page builder. Now we have geared this video for both free and pro users. We will first start out with the free version of Elementor to help first time users build their e-commerce website. Then later in the video, I'll show you how to use the Elementor Pro version and all of its features to extend the power of your e-commerce website. Step three, we'll create products. After you get comfortable with the page builder, we'll move on to step three and we will start adding products to your e-commerce website. I'll show you how to price your products, create categories, add product descriptions, and also upload your images. Step four, the theme customizer. I'll introduce you all to the theme customizer and plugins. There's a ton of free plugins that can help enhance your e-commerce website to convert more sales, so I'll cover some of these in the video. And step five, an intro to Elementor Pro. I'll be introducing you all to the Elementor theme builder. I'll show you how to build custom headers and footers, custom shop pages, and custom product pages that you can fully customize. Step six, the WooCommerce settings. WooCommerce is a free plugin that can be used to accept payments, handle shipping, and taxes for your e-commerce website. I'll show you how to automate your taxes, set up shipping, and accept credit card payments from anywhere around the world. Step seven, marketing. So after you get your e-commerce website up and running, we'll then go through the marketing guide on how to make your first sale with your e-commerce website. Now there is a link in the description of this video and this will take us to step one, which is to purchase web hosting. And welcome to namehero.com. Now I've been recommending namehero.com for years and people love it. In fact, this month alone, we have had zero downtime with namehero. So you will have a really reliable website and also our load time is under one second. So we do test these servers to make sure that the websites are fast and uh, reliable. So you guys will have a really good deal with namehero.com. Now, once you guys get here, go ahead and click on get started now. Now we have four different plans. We have the starter cloud, the plus cloud, the turbo cloud, and the business cloud. Now it really depends on your budgets, but I recommend the turbo cloud because with this, you can host unlimited websites. You also do get access to the new NVMe storage, which just gives you a little bit more performance uh, for your website. But uh, go ahead and just select the package that works best for you. Obviously, I'd probably go with the Turbo Cloud because you do get more performance. But if you're on a budget, you can always go with the Starter Cloud or the Plus Cloud as well. And once you guys select the package, you'll go ahead and scroll down. And then you'll click on Order Now. All right, cool. So next, we're going to enter in our domain name. So a domain name is the web address that you're using. So for example, namehero.com. You can see here, I was kind of messing around with this. So we have a dronesrus.com. You could put anything that you want. So this would be the name of your website for your e-commerce websites. For example, I'll just do Elementor e-commerce tutorials, the Z and search. Oh, hopefully it's available. There we go. Yeah. So you guys also do get a free domain with name hero. So that's pretty cool. You guys save yourselves another, I think it's like 14 bucks a year. Uh, once you guys select the domain, you know, give it some thoughts. I know it's, you know, it's personal, it's your website. So give it some thoughts. And once you're here, you'll click on continue. All right, next we need to select our building cycle. Now, uh, personally, I recommend one year. Uh, one year you still get a large discount and this will also help you decide if this is for you or not. So go ahead and select one year or a billing cycle that works best for you. And we're gonna scroll down here. Now there are some upsells and personally, I don't think you really need any of these upsells. Uh, a lot of these are available with free plugins and stuff like that. So uh, I wouldn't recommend any of them. Uh, we do get a free SSL with Name Hero. That's pretty cool. And we do need that to accept credit card payments on our website. So that's another pretty cool reason uh, to sign up with Name Hero. Here, I'll click on continue on the right side. Now this I do recommend, I recommend getting the ID protection and this will protect your personal information from spammers and companies trying to sell you all sorts of stuff. Trust me guys, if you don't have that checked, you're gonna get emails for Viagra, from SEO companies, from uh, all sorts of really crazy companies. So uh, I recommend the ID protection. Uh, once you select that, you'll click on continue. And for a year of hosting with Name Hero, depending on your package, you can see you're paying less than $100 for the entire year. So you do get a really good value with NameHero.com. And here you can see we have the hosting package, we have our domain registration, and you guys did save quite a bit of money uh, using that link in the description of this video. Now, once you guys are here, we'll go ahead and scroll down. 
and you'll need to create an account. So you'll put in your first name, your last name, your email, your billing address, all this good stuff. I'm sure you guys have seen these uh, screens many times on the internet. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, uh, try to write down your support pin. Uh, this will actually help verify um, once you need like help or something, they'll ask you for your pin. So they'll verify that it's you who's making the phone call or messaging them on live chat. And also keep scrolling down here. You can pay with credit card and PayPal and Coinbase, ooh, cryptocurrency. And also a uh, credit card. Looks like they have it twice here, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. So you'll go ahead and select a uh, payment method that works best for you. And also you'll go ahead and fill in these payment details and make sure to enter in your social security number. I'm just joking, it's a joke. There's no social security needed. <laughs> and uh, once you're done with that, you will click on I have read, yada, yada, yada. And I'm sure you guys will read the terms of service, right? And once you're done with that, you'll click on the checkouts and I will meet you in the customer portal. All right, and welcome to your new dashboard. So this is your current dashboard. As you guys can see, I had many different packages, many domains, and I also have tickets with Name Hero, and they really helped me out with all of my problems. So this is just your interface. On the left side, you can see your hosting packages. These are your current domains. You can always register a new domain. Uh, also billing. So if you wanna see your payments, or you wanna add funds, or you wanna adjust your payment methods, you can do that here. And also the support. So if you guys run into something weird, I know with websites, things just kind of get weird sometimes. Uh, you guys can always open a ticket here and they will help you out with all of your problems. And they are pretty fast. I mean, I think maybe under one hour, they can help you guys with all your problems. So once you guys are here, let's go ahead and install WordPress onto our new domain. You'll first click on my cloud. Now here we have hosting packages. Now you should probably only have one here. So just go ahead and click on your hosting package. And next we're going to see this login to cPanel. Go ahead and click on login to cPanel. All right, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and install WordPress onto our domain. So up here, we'll type in WordPress. Here we go. We have WordPress manager by Softaculous. We'll click on this. All right, and from here, we're going to install WordPress. You guys can see I have many installations of WordPress already, but right here, you'll click on install. And now we're going to look for the domain that we purchased. So right here you have the choose domain section. So you'll probably see your domain that you purchased. I'll just go ahead and select this one, but you're going to select the domain that you purchased. And for the protocol, make sure this is HTTPS, which is the SSL. Now for indirectory, make sure nothing is here. All right, I don't know why that's there by default, but oops, <laughs> whoops. But uh, make sure nothing is there because that will install your domain onto like yourwebsite.com slash something and you don't want that there. It, it, yeah, just don't have that there. Make sure that's make sure that's empty. Now for the admin username, go ahead and give yourself an admin username and a password. And this is what we are going to use to log into the website. So whenever you want to build your website, you're going to use these login credentials. So make sure you write these down. I'll just put admin. Never put pass guys. Uh, make sure this is something unique. I'll just put uh, paddywhack and your admin email. Make sure that this is an email that you have access to because when you forget your password, they will send this information to your email. So I'll put in my, my Gmail account here, my famous PC hoarder, which I do get tons of spam. And below that, you can always select your language. We can always adjust the language as well uh, inside the WordPress dashboard, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. And we're gonna keep scrolling down here to the bottom. They have these other themes they want us to use, but uh, we're not gonna use these. And right here, you'll click on install. Yeah, they said three to four minutes. That was not three to four minutes, right? Now here we have install WordPress and this is the administrative URL, administrative URL. So just go ahead and click on this link and this will log you in to your website. All right, awesome. So now we have WordPress installed and our website is now live on the internet. And if you wanna see what your website looks like right now on the internet at the top left right here, you'll just click on visit sites and this is the current theme that they are giving us. And it is really bland, really boring, ugly, but not to worry, we'll make it look really good. So to go back to your dashboard, go ahead up here and click on dashboard. Now that we have our website online, now let's go ahead and adjust some of these general settings. The first thing we wanna do is go to users and click on profile. Now in the future, if you guys ever lose your password, or if you wanna change the color scheme, this is where you're going to do it. Uh, I think for this video, we're gonna use Midnight. I just like Midnight, it's really easy to see. Uh, these other ones are just really, really tacky. I mean, this, that's way too much, you know? So yeah, I think we're gonna go with Midnight. I just like that, it's a lot easier to see. And uh, we're gonna scroll down here. 
Now you can always adjust your email. So uh, you can always change your email. And remember, this is important because if you forget your password, the password will be sent to that specific email. So you can always adjust that at any time. And below that, we have a new password. This is where you're going to uh, change your password. So for WordPress, if you ever want to change your password, this is where you're going to do it. And once you've made all the changes that you want, you'll go ahead and click on update profile. Now let's say for example, you guys speak a different language. On the left side right here, we have settings. We'll click on general. Now here you can enter your email or you can update it at any time. So if you get a new email address and you wanna update it, you would do that right there. And below that, we have the site language. Now, if you change this, uh, this will actually apply to the back end. So you can put any language that you speak. So if you speak Spanish, Portuguese, Arabic, Hindi, whatever, you can adjust the language for your uh, back end options. And below that, we'll go ahead and click on save changes. The next thing that we need to do is we need to adjust our permalinks. On the left side, you're going to see permalinks. Now here we have a few options, but you want to select this as post name. And the reason why we do this is because when you go to a website, you see like, you know, your website.com slash shop, right? Not like all this, you know, numbers and uh, it just looks really cluttered and ugly. And the post name option is the best for SEO purposes. So once you select the post name, you'll scroll down and click on save changes. All right, now let's say, for example, you guys want to log in and log out of your websites. Maybe you're at a friend's house and you want to, you know, mess around with WordPress. Uh, first, what I'll do is I'll log out. So right here, I'll go ahead and click on log out. So right now I'm logged out of my website and there's no way for me to enter it. So whenever you want to log into your website and make changes, you'll go to your address bar and type in dash WP dash admin and press enter. From here, you guys can enter in your login credentials that you guys use to install WordPress. So I believe mine was admin and it was Paddywhack, right? Paddywhack, we can always take a look here. Remember me and login. So that's how you guys can log in and log out of your WordPress website. So you can pretty much work on your website from any location. All right, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install a WordPress theme. So on the left side, we have appearance and themes. Let's make it, let's make our site look a little bit better because we have this default green and it just, it's not working. You know, it is not working. On the top right here, you'll click on add new. And here we'll display a list of WordPress themes. Now, essentially what WordPress themes are is they are kind of like the structure of your websites. However, with today's page builders, uh, a lot of these themes are becoming less and less important and the page builders are doing most of the work. Um, so you guys like, uh, I know you guys see all these beautiful demos, but most of this is done with the actual page builder. But the theme that we're gonna be using for this video is Astra. So this is it right here, it's Astra. You can also search for it by typing in A-S-T-R-A and it should display right here, Astra, there we go. So go ahead and click on this. You guys can see it has a lot of positive reviews. It's actually the most popular free WordPress theme because it's it's pretty simple and it's really lightweight. On the top right here, you'll click on install. So now we're installing it onto uh, our WordPress website and then we'll click on activate. All right, cool. So now we have installed Astra onto our website. And if you wanna see your website on the top left, you can see visit sites and you can kind of see here how the entire website has sort of changed and adjusted depending on the theme that we picked. Now, the next thing I wanna do is we wanna create some pages so that we can start using the page builder, right? So let's create some pages. On the top right here under plus new, we'll click on page. Now this is pretty basic. So uh, what page is this? Well, I'm gonna close this little welcome box. This is our home page. And up here, I'll click on publish and publish. Now let's say, for example, you wanna make another page. I'll click on this little WordPress little dash and here's our current pages. So you can see we have the home page, and we also have these other two pages that were created by default, but I don't, I don't wanna use these pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on these, and we're going to move this to the trash and delete it. So that's how you guys can always delete pages. Now up here, we have add new. Let's create the about us, right? So this would be like the about us. And on the top right, publish and publish. And let's do that one more time. Now let's make the contact page. Contact us. And publish and publish. All right, cool. 
Now we need to assign these to the menu. So if you notice on our website, we don't really have a menu. So if you see it, we don't have a menu or we do have a menu, but it's just not really adjusted well. I mean, the home is on the back. Let's now create a menu. Let's go to our dashboard and under appearance, we'll click on menus. So I'll go ahead and give your menu a name. I think menu one is just something, you know, you guys can see main menu for website, whatever. It doesn't really matter. This is not visible to anybody. And I'm going to click on create menu. Here we have those pages that we made. You can see all of them under view all. Go ahead and add all of these. I know we see two home pages and that's okay. I'll explain that in just a bit. And I'll click on add menu. So this is a custom link and this is the default a link that it creates for us when you install WordPress. So I want to get rid of this. So whenever you want to like get rid of something on your menu, just go ahead and click on this drop down arrow and then remove it. And now we can adjust this by dragging and dropping like that. And this is the primary menu. So I want to select that and I'll click on save menu. All right, cool. Now let's go to, to visit site. And now you can see that we have our pages. So we have the home page, the about us page, the contact us. Pretty cool. Now, what I want to do next is I want to assign the home page as a home page. Because if you notice, we go to our website right here uh, and we press enter, it brings us to this random page and this is not the home page. So let's now assign the home page as our home page. On the top right here, we'll click on customize. This is the theme customizer and we'll talk more about the theme customizer a little bit later uh, in chapter, I believe it's chapter three. We'll talk more about the theme options, but we just need to make one small setting here under the home page settings at the bottom. Go ahead and click on this and I want to select a static page and here I want to select the home page as our home page and then I'll click on publish and now we can close the theme customizer. Next, let's move on to the next step and let's install the page builder in order to build out our e-commerce website. Now there is a free version and there is also a pro version of this page builder. And I'll explain the differences between both in the next section. Now there is a link in the description of this video and it'll take you to a page to purchase the pro version. You guys can also get there by going to durawilson.com slash Elementor. Now this is an affiliate link, so it does give me a small commission and helps me and my team make these layouts for you guys all for free because there's a lot of work behind our, behind our templates. Now I'll go ahead and scroll down here and explain these pricing plans. So they have five different pricing plans and the biggest difference is that uh, they're for a specific amount of websites. So the essential is for one website. There's also the pro, it looks like they, they kind of hit it, but um, that is uh, three websites for $100. And there's also the expert plan. Now, one thing to note guys, that this company does give you a 30 day money back guarantee for any reason whatsoever. So even if you buy it and it doesn't work out for you, not to worry, you can always get your money back. Now with the pro version of Elementor, uh, you can create a custom shop page like this. So you'll see that the demo here, we have this really nice custom shop page. We've actually created four custom shop pages for you guys. And you guys can check this demo in the description of this video. Also with the pro version, you can build out this custom header at the top and also have a custom product page. So you'll see that this is a custom product page that we specifically built for you guys for this video. Now, if you guys do decide to use just the free version, that will still work out pretty well because you can have a shop page that look like this where you just have a list of the products. And then also you can click on the product and this would be just the default free version of Elementor. So it still works. You can still build an e-commerce website with both the free and the pro version. However, I'll be installing the uh, pro version on the websites. I would probably go with the expert plan because that gives you enough websites and $200 guys is really not a lot of money, you know, cause look how much Starbucks I drink every day. I spend probably 10 bucks a day on Starbucks. <laughs> so, but uh, go ahead and purchase a plan that works best for you. I don't think the studio or the agency is, you know, ideal for beginners. Definitely not. That's a lot of websites and that's more for people like me who manage various uh, websites. So uh, go ahead and click on buy now. All right. And then you'll go ahead and fill out your information, your billing information and all of this stuff. And yeah, I think you guys can pay with a credit card or something. I don't have a discount code, so they don't really give out discount codes for Elementor Pro, unfortunately, but you'll go ahead and put in your credit card or you can pay with PayPal right here. And then I will meet you guys on the very next page. All right, cool. Now, once you guys purchase Elementor, you guys will be brought to your uh, Elementor dashboard. And you guys can see, I do have a lot of different websites here. So, you know, the plan for me, you know, I obviously host a lot of websites, but once you guys get here, you can just go ahead and click on this little download button. And this will allow you to download Elementor Pro. So go ahead and click on Elementor Pro. 
and I'll save this. Now let's go back to our website and let's upload Elementor onto our uh, website. So first let's go ahead and go to dashboard and then we'll go to plugins and then we'll go to add new. Now, if you're looking for the free version of Elementor, you'll go right here and type in Elementor. And this is the plugin that you'll need to install. So you can click on install now and then you'll click on activate. All right, so there is Elementor. Now, for those of you who want to go with the pro version, you'll then go ahead and click on add new, upload plugin, browse, and then right here we have Elementor Pro. So then I'll go ahead and open that and install now. All right, so now we'll go ahead and click on activate plugin. Next, you might need to connect your Elementor Pro license. So right here, just go ahead and click on connect and activate. They're just going to link your account that you created with the website. So you'll see that this just connects to their website. So we'll click on activate. All right, awesome. So now we have installed Elementor Pro. Now there is two more plugins that we need to install. So we'll go back to plugins and click on add new. Essentially what plugins are guys, plugins are like applications for your website. So you know how for your iPhone, you guys have an application for your bank or for, uh, you know, if you wanna have a better camera filter or whatever, there is an application slash plugin for pretty much everything. For example, this one can migrate your website. This one is security. You know, a lot of these plugins guys, I haven't really used a lot of them, but uh, they do have tons of plugins. Now the plugin that I want you guys to install is this one right here called Lightspeed Cache. You can go ahead and go up here and type in Lightspeed Cache. Every website needs a caching plugin. A caching plugin essentially makes your site a lot more faster. Go ahead and click on install now. And in case you're brand new, um, whenever you make changes on your websites, uh, you might want to cache your website because then that will actually make sure the changes are saved or just appear to be saved. You'll get it later. But go ahead and click on activate. And I want to install one more plugin. Go ahead and click on add new. And here we're going to type in essentials. This is the plugin that we're going to use. Go ahead and click on install now. The essentials add-ons plugin are just basically giving you a lot more elements for Elementor. So it just gives you a lot more, uh, more modules to use and it just gives you a little bit more uh, you know, playing room with your builder. So go ahead and click on activate. Now there's a short setup wizard. So let's go ahead and just click on next. Now there's just one thing that we need to add here and this is mainly for the free users. So right here, click on product grid and click on next. Here, we're just going to click on next. We're going to skip this and we're also going to skip this. These are just additional plugins that they want us to install. They're trying to sell us, but uh, yeah, I don't want to use those. And then I'll click on finish. All right, so now we're ready to build our website. Let's go ahead and go back to pages and click on all pages. Now we first want to design the home page. So this is our home page. I'll click on edit. And now we're finally ready to use Elementor on our site. So at the top right here, click on edit with Elementor. All right, party people, get your thinking caps on because I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you how everything works with this builder. Now, one thing, I wanna go ahead and get rid of this right here. This is their little um, upsell thing. Just click on don't show this again and click on submit. They're just trying to get us to buy stuff. We don't, we don't want that. All right, congratulations. You guys now have your domain and hosting. It's pretty simple, right? Now we can go on to step two where we can start designing our website using the Elementor page builder. It's really easy to get started. After probably 10 minutes of using it, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. So let's jump into it. Let's first talk about the page builder and how everything works. Let's say, for example, you wanna create columns, right? So we'll click on add a new section and then we have specific columns. So we have one, two, three, four, and you can just click on like, for example, the three column row, right? Now we have three columns and then we'll click on these little elements tab. And now you can drag in elements in these boxes. So for example, we have this heading text, click on this again, we have this text editor, and then also we have a butts in here like that. All right, so you can just kind of like see how this works. You guys can drag in a video. Uh, you can also, uh, you know, drag in whatever. Now these are pro elements. So if you did purchase the pro version, you guys can use some of these pro elements like animated headlines where it has that little uh, animation. And then they do have uh, some other ones like the call to action. Call to action is pretty good. You can just kind of drag it right there with that little blue thing. So that's how you can kind of drag in elements. Now the plugin that we installed was called the essentials add-on plugin. 
And if we scroll down right here, you're gonna see essential add-ons. So these are the additional elements that you get with um, Elementor and you guys can use this you know, if you want to, you know, explore and mess around, maybe you like the info box, they have like an info box and they're just different elements. And, you know, they just all have a unique style because I just want you guys to have a little bit more control with your e-commerce websites. Um, here we have like a tool tip box. I don't know what that is. Let's see, you know, a lot of these guys, I don't even know what they do. <laughs> I'll be very honest, but uh, that's just the basics of taking elements and dragging them onto your page. Now I know this looks terrible, but not to worry. So let's say for example, I want to delete an element. I'll right click on this pencil and delete it, right? Right click and delete, right click and delete. Now I can also duplicate elements by right clicking and clicking on duplicate, right? And it'll just go ahead and duplicate that uh, here, duplicate and then duplicate. And then we can also take these elements and drag them around as well. So we can just click on that little pencil icon and then just drag in those elements pretty much anywhere we want. Now let's say, all right, Daryl, this looks terrible. Let's just, uh, let's, let's get rid of all this. We'll click on this little X bar at the top and that will delete the entire section. So go ahead and click on delete section. All right, so that's just the basics of Elementor. That's how you would drag in modules. Now, just to be clear, every module has three different sections. We have the category, I'm sorry, the content section, which actually controls the element itself. Then we have the styling tab, which controls the actual style of this element. And then we have the advanced tab. The advanced tab will actually change the position of the specific uh, element. So for the motion effects, you can add in animations like fading in, and you can kind of add these for your elements. And every element you can do this. So it doesn't really matter which element that you use. There is these options for every specific element. So just to be clear, every element has the same tabs. Uh, for example, the button, we have the content where you can change the, you know, the text, the style, which changes the actual color, and then the advanced tab, which changes the position and also motion effects and just other options. Like if you want to have a border or something like that. So that's just like the basics of the page builder. Now let's go ahead and build out this page right here. So with this page, we have a two column row, right? We have one column and two columns, and we just have a very large uh, background image. So let's go ahead and do that. So first I'm gonna click on this little uh, add a new section, and then I'm gonna click on this two column row, right? Now what I wanna first do is I wanna click on this element tab, and I wanna drag in this intersection like this right here, okay? Now I wanna delete this one column because we have two columns, I only want one, right? Like that. The reason why I use the intersection was because you'll see a little bit later, the intersection gives us a little bit more control. Like we can change the height and everything, but for this tab, we don't have those options. So that's why I'm using the intersection. Okay. Now, first I want to add in a background image. Now there is demo images for all of you guys in the description below of this video. So first let's click on this edit section tab, which is these six dots for this big section. And then we'll go to style. And then we have the classic and then we have image. So this is where we can upload images as our background. You may also go ahead and adjust the specific color. If you want to use just like a one color, you can do that. But I think most people today use images for their backgrounds, right? So I want to go ahead and get rid of that by just reducing the opacity like that. So for image, I'll click on choose image. And here we can go ahead and upload files. So you'll click on select file. And there's this image folder right here called image folder. And what you can do is you can go ahead and uh, click on all these images right here and upload them to your WordPress websites. So you'll click on all the images and then click on open. Now all the images are being uploaded to your website. So you can use any image that you find on the internet and you can also upload your images uh, to your media library. All right, so the images have finally uploaded. Let's go ahead and add in a background image first. So we'll scroll down and find that guy with the red shirt. This one right here. I'll click on insert media. Now you might notice here how this background isn't really stretched. So I want this to kind of be full width. So what I'm gonna do is go to layout right here. And then for the content width, I want this full width. And I also want to fit this to the screen. So you'll see height right here says fit to the screen. This allows this to basically fit to the entire screen for all devices. Now you might notice that when you upload your image, it's kind of hard to position it. So this is the image, but uh, I want to position this in a specific manner. So for the size, I want this to be cover. And if you want to adjust your image, you can move it around like this, or let's see, let's see here. There we go like that. You can also do custom and move the image around to where you want. 
uh, just depending on, you know, if you do upload an image and you want it in a specific way, you can go ahead and upload it right there like that. So that's just basically how we can have a background image for us to work with. Now let's add in some elements. So we have these two element tabs right here. Uh, what I first want to do is add in a divider module. Now you'll notice right here how we have two columns. Now this is a divider module, a text module, a text module, and then a button module. So let's add in those in. So I'll go ahead and go do search widget and just find divider, right? Divider. And I'll put that in. Now I want to click on this little text. So I just want to give this some design, you know, because I, I just don't want to start putting in random text. I want to kind of introduce this section. So that's the whole point of all of this. So let's go back over here. So for the text, I'll put in something like best 2020 collections. And then for the style, now we can go ahead and adjust the style here. So for the color, I want to use a specific color code. Now I'll leave this color code in the description of this video, but the color code I'm using is AD0000. And it's just this really subtle red color. It's not like too red, but it's just like a very small faint red. And for the text section right here, we can go ahead and adjust this text. So for the color, I'll leave it as some sort of black, you know, just like a, a very faint black. And the topography, this is where we can change the fonts. Now, I personally recommend to use maybe one to two fonts on your website. Do not use more than that because then the website looks very tacky. You'll see on this website how I'm only using one font. I'm actually using two. So this is enter font. And then this also is enter font. But this right here is Poppins font. So it's very, you know, it's very faint, it's very subtle, but you can kind of if you look at it closely, you'll see the differences, but your first glance, you probably won't be able to, you won't be able to tell. So over here, I'll put in enter, enter. This is the font that we're using. And I'm gonna make this 12 pixels. It's very small, you know? And then the weight, now the weight is this, like the fatness of the actual, uh, you know, of the, of the font. So we can make it skinnier and fatter or something like that. And for the transformation, I want this all uppercase. So I want to make sure that these are all uppercase and then we can adjust the line height here. So you can see how we can kind of mess around with the line height. I'm going to put 1.5 and then for the line spacing, we can also adjust this as well. So you can add in more spacing like that. And I want to add in just like three. I kind of want to like stretch it across a little bit just to give it some, you know, design and stuff like that. Now for the position, we can actually move the text in a specific position like that to kind of just, you know, give it some decor, you know, actually for that uh, line height, we're just going to leave that blank. You know, I think that looks a lot better. Yeah. Let's leave that blank. Now let's go back to the content section. So now I want to adjust the width of this line because it's just too long. Right? So let's go ahead and reduce that. I mean like that, right? That looks a lot better. And now I say that's about done, right? So let's add in the next section. So we'll go ahead and click on the elements tab. And now I can add in either a heading text or if I'm using the pro version, I can use the animated text, which essentially just allows us to add two different colors. So that's just the main difference between both of those, but we can just use a standard text for, for now to get started. And I'll just type in, I don't know, big dazzle after dark, and we can adjust the alignments of this. However, we're already kind of aligning to the left, so we can just leave it there. And for the style, I want to keep everything consistent. So I want to keep this like a subtle black, right? And I want to use enter font again. So over here, We'll change this font family again to enter, right? Enter, but I want to make this a little bigger. So let's, let's just kind of push it up just a little bit. We'll do like 98 pixels. And for the weights, I just want it a little bit more fatter, right? Just a little bit more fat. All right. So I think that's pretty good. Now, one thing you might notice that this is actually kind of scrunched, right? This text is all the way to the left side. And also this row is just not really working out well. So we can actually adjust the actual uh, width of everything. So let's go back over here and click on the edit section tab and go to layouts. And I want to keep this boxed, you know, maybe we shouldn't have done full width. So now it's more of a box layout. And I also want to go ahead and give this more space to work with. So let's say, for example, I want to have even columns or uneven columns. I'm going to go ahead and put this up to like 60, you know, 63 or something. There we go. Something like that. So I think that does look better. Now, the next step, we're going to add in this little text. Now what this does that this just gives it kind of something to work with, you know, so we don't want just big text. We need that filler text. So let's click back on the elements and drag in a text editor. Now we can add in, you know, if you want to copy more text, you know, just to kind of give it some more, uh, you know, more, 
I guess you want to say, I, I like to call it filler text, you know, because we're just using it just to kind of fill in space, you know, just to give it some structure. And now we need to add in the button, and this is also a divider. Now, this is more of an advanced strategy. So if you are using Elementor for a while, uh, this will be sort of something that you might not have known about. Let's click on these little elements tab, and I'm going to first drag in this button. Now let's first go ahead and design this button. Now this link, we can link later on to our shop page. But for now, what we'll do is I'll just put in something like shop now, right? Shop, make sure it's uppercase, right? Uppercase, shop now. And I want this extra large. Now you can adjust this button at any time um, in the advanced tab, but let's do that a little bit later. I don't wanna jump into the advanced section because you know a lot of us don't really need to, <laughs> we don't need to go there. But uh, click on the style tab, and then we have topography. So I wanna keep this consistent. Let's change this back to enter, right? We'll, we'll, we, got, we gotta stay on track here, you know, enter, we'll keep it going. And then we can do something like 600, a little bit fatter, and here we can adjust the, the text of it. So I'll just put something like, I don't know, 16 or 15 or something like that. So that looks pretty good. And you wanna use the same color code. So remember, when you're making your website, the colors that you introduce on the homepage, you need to carry this throughout your website. This is your brand, right? So our brand color is black, red, and this gray color. And if you go through this website, we kind of just carry it throughout the entire site. And even when, you, when I scroll fast, it just looks like it's the same website because a lot of amateurs, they tend to use a lot of different colors and that's a quick way to make your site look really tacky. So just be consistent with your colors, right? So here we go. I'll do AD0000 or AD0000, all right? And there you go. So there's our button. Now there's one thing that we also need to do as well. And I wanna add in a divider. Now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this cause I'm lazy. You know, I don't wanna make that from scratch all over again. There's no reason for us to do that. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it here. Now Elementor by default doesn't allow us to stack elements next to each other, which is kind of a bummer. However, we can do that in the advanced options. Now this is an advanced tactic and this is something that you guys can use if you wanna stack elements together. So first I'm going to click on this button and go to the advanced tab and for the positioning, I want to make sure this is inline auto, all right? Now I'm gonna do the same thing for this divider. So I'll click on the divider, advanced, and then positioning with inline auto. There you go. So now you'll see that uh, it's kind of scrunched. You know, we need, to, we need to do a little bit more work, but overall you can see how this is now kind of uh, closer to the button. So let's click on this little uh, divider and let's go to contents. Now I wanna really adjust the width of this because we need to kind of, uh, you know, just give it more breathing room. So click on the pixel and let's see if we can kind of push it across. There we go, like that. So this is percentage and this is pixel or pixels, yeah. So next let's change the alignments. So click on style and text and I wanna change the position of this to right like that. Very similar to what we have right here. Now you guys might notice here that it's not 100% the same and that's just because maybe we're off a few pixels, but overall it's the same exact structure. But uh, here I'll just put in something like 50% off, right? 50% off. And maybe that's too much width now, you know, we can reduce that and we can also probably make the text bigger, you know, cause the text is a little bit too small. So we can adjust that in the style section topography and just make it a little bit more bigger like that. All right. So that's pretty much it guys. The landing page is done. Now you guys have probably seen this and uh, you know, this is a great looking landing page and I'll explain why we did this. You know, we, we added the divider just to kind of give it some, uh, you know, give it some style and decor and also introduce the brand because this brand, we're now going to introduce it on to several different sections throughout the websites. Now, if you guys are using the pro version, you can use the pro elements right here of the animated headline. And this is essentially the same thing. So what I did right here is I just put big dazzle and then after dark. And what you can do is for the after on the style tab for the headline for the, uh, was it the animated text? You can change the actual fonts and color of this. So for the text color, you can just kind of change it to something else right there. So I think we use like AD, AD 0000, right? 
And for the shape, we can do something like underline, you know, something like that. And we can also change the color of that underline as well. So uh, we can do like AD000 again, and then we can adjust the font as well. So just remember the style tab is where you can adjust the topography. So here you'll just go ahead and adjust the text as well. And then you guys get the point. So we can just, uh, you know, change the colors and everything. And also remember, uh, you can change the alignments to left. So that's just if you're using the pro version and you want to have access to that specific color. So that's how you guys can kind of uh, add those different color brands to uh, your homepage. So hopefully that was clear, right? Pretty sure you guys with me still, everything's still good. All right, let's move on to the next section. And I'll be very honest with you guys. When we made this part of the website, we did not realize it was too advanced for beginners. So what we decided to do instead was we actually made you guys a new section that you guys can edit and customize. Now you guys will also get this for free in the layout that I'll be providing you all, but I'll do that a little bit later. Now in the image folder that you guys downloaded, there is a JSON file. So let me show you guys how to import layouts. So here you'll see this add template button. And first let's talk about blocks. Maybe you guys might be interested in some of these blocks. Now with Elementor Pro, uh, you do get access to all of these blocks. So let's say for example, um, I'll click on this uh, call to action section, right? Now, I don't know why they're black and white guys. You know, I wish they were colored. You know, it's just, it's just, I don't know why they did that. It's really ugly. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just something they did that just, I don't know, it just, whatever, you know? But you can go through these categories here and they have specific blocks that you can choose. And all you need to do right here is click on insert and there you go. So now it inserts that block right here. And you can change this text to, to whatever you want. Now you've already kind of get an idea of this. So now you can go to the style tab, you can change the colors and the fonts. And also if you want to change like the animations or the padding, uh, we can do that right here. Now we'll talk more about padding a little bit later. Uh, that's just adding in space, but I'll give you some ideal, um, you know, ideal instances of when you would want to use it. But uh, I'll go ahead and delete this. And those are the blocks. So just keep in mind that uh, if you do get stuck with design and you need some help, they do have some blocks that you guys can use. And these blocks are, they do have some blocks that are free as well. And they do also have pro blocks, but uh, yeah, I just wish they were colored and you know, that's that. But let's say for example, you wanna upload a layout. So right here, you'll see this little import template tab. Click on this and click on select file. Now this is the file that I gave you guys. It's this called, um, it's going to be called the about section. So that's, that's it right there. For some reason, it just looks like that, but you'll click on that file and click on open. All right, so this is called the middle section. I'll rename it in the uh, folder for you guys, don't worry. Here, I'll click on insert and click on yes. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down here. And there we go. Now we have this really nice section. Now you notice here how we kept this brand consistent. We added in this divider section and here we have three different categories. So these are gonna be for your product categories. Let's say for example, you're selling uh, shirts, glasses, or you know, shoes or yeah, shoes. You can go ahead and link them later to your product categories. Now you can adjust these images by just clicking on the column tab and going to style and here you can adjust the actual image. So if you wanna have an image of a product, you can go ahead and do that. Now this section is very unique. We use the background overlay right here to kind of add in this black um, you know, overlay. So now you'll see that we have this white text, but if we don't have this overlay, what happens is the text just looks really bland and it's really hard to read. So for example, I'll just click on background overlay here and just give you an example. So here, you know, I'll just go ahead and get rid of it. And now you'll see this text is really hard to read, right? So we added in this really subtle overlay here and you can kind of control it to just kind of help the user uh, read the text better because we don't want to add black text because black text on these kind of images just doesn't really look well. So the black overlay did look a lot better. And let's say for example, you want to link your products on here. Now you notice that these are not buttons. So this is actually a text module, right? So this is a heading text. However, you can link them to another part of the website. So this would be like your products page, you know, or like, you know, www.darylwilson.com. And this now turns into a link. So you'll see how the cursor now has this link button. 
So that's how you can use pretty much any elements to link them onto different pages. Now remember, there's really no right or wrong way to use these elements. Whatever look and style that you can achieve, that's really all that matters, all right? So have fun with this, you know, but uh, yeah, that's that. Now let's move on to the next section. So let's go ahead and scroll down past this. Now we're going to insert this little brand thing we got going on and this right here and also the title. This title, I'm using a different font, but that's just something that I just did, you know, just because. But uh, let's go ahead and right click on this and duplicate this. So we got two of these. Now we need to insert a new section here. So let's go ahead and click on new section. Now this is a two column row, right? We have one column and we have two columns. So let's add in a two column row, right? A two column row. Go ahead and delete this column here. And now I'm going to drag this. Remember, I'm really lazy. So we're going to drag in this element like that. Now we can also do the same thing for this text. You know, if you're really lazy and you don't want to, you know, add in the colors and the fonts again, we can just go ahead and duplicate this as well. And we can just drag this element down using the mouse cursor. And this will be like new arrivals. New arrivals. And then just adjust the text as needed. So obviously this text is too big, so we can just make it a little bit more smaller. And I do like the pop-ins, you know, that's definitely a no-no in web design, but I just really like the pop-ins. I just feel like it really stands out. And also here, we need to kind of adjust this width right there like that. So I think that looks a lot better. Now we're gonna talk about padding. So you'll notice here how this is just too close to each other. You know, it's too close and we need space. Now let's talk about padding. So first let's click on this little six dots and we'll go to the advanced tab. So padding is space, right? So let's say for example, I want space on the top section. I'm gonna unclick this link values and now we're gonna add padding like that. And maybe what's what's a good padding? 90, 100? I don't know, 100, 100 good, right? What do you guys think? You guys can let me know. So yeah, that's that. And over here, uh, this is actually an icon. So um, let's go back over here to the elements tab. And I use icon, however, you guys can use anything that you want. So I used an icon box like this, and I just kind of altered it a little bit. So I just used an arrow. So with this icon box, you get access to all these different icons, and I just typed an arrow like that. And I got rid of this subtext. You know, we don't need it, right? And here I just put in browse all collections. So I'll just type that in browse all collections. And you might notice here how we need to adjust this. So I want this to be on the right side like that. All right. And then from the style tab, now we can go ahead and design the color and everything. So we have this, like, I guess you want to say like, oh, no, we have the red, sorry. So it's 80, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then also for the uh, content as well, we can adjust this with 80, 0, 0, 0. Now, obviously this text is a little bit too big, so we need re to reduce the size of also the icon and the text. Now the description, we actually got rid of that. So we're only using this just to kind of add some, you know, just add some design and everything to our page. So here I'll go ahead and reduce this, right? Maybe like 10 pixels, 12. And then I wanna have letter spacing. So I just wanna really stretch it across to kind of, you know, give it some design, right? And then we need to do the same thing for the icon box because the icon box is way too large now. So we can go ahead and reduce the size of the icon box by going over here to size and just kind of making it look like that, you know, something like that. Now, also you might notice that this is kind of not aligned properly. Now there's two ways we can do this. We can add in padding. However, if you add in padding, um, it'll have some responsive problems with different devices. So you want to use the column section. So for the column section, for the vertically aligned, maybe we can put it at the bottom here, right? I think that works, right? Or we can adjust it in the middle or, you know, they have they have a few different options, but I think bottom works the best. Just remember if you add padding and margin to stuff like that, it could look a little weird on specific devices. So now that we've actually done that part, let's click on update and save our progress. Now, just remember, just like we link the text to a different part of a website, we can click on this little pencil icon and under the content section, we have this link section. So uh, we can link them later to our shop page once we create it. So we're not necessarily creating buttons, but we're just creating different 
styles of buttons, I guess you can say, to kind of add some more decor because I don't want to have big buttons everywhere. It doesn't look good. You know, it looks kind of weird. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next section and let's finally make some products. It's pretty simple, right? After you mess around with Elementor for a little bit, you'll get the hang of it. So now that we've finished step two, let's go to step three and now let's create products for your e-commerce store. Now we're first gonna create a simple product and then we'll jump and we'll create a, um, a variable product which has more variations. After we create products, we will then jump back to the website and we'll finish designing the rest of the homepage. So let me explain the difference between a simple product and a variable product. A simple product is a product with no selection. There is only the add to cart button. There are no sizes or styles available. This is an example of a simple product. Next, we have a variable product. A variable product allows you to have multiple variables such as size or color for your product. For example, you might be selling a t-shirt. That t-shirt might come in specific colors or sizes. So that is an example of why you'd want to have a variable product. All right, so let's move on to the next section and we're going to now create products for our e-commerce website. You guys ready? Finally, let's go back to here and go to exit the dashboard. Now we're going to install a free plugin and this free plugin is incredible. It gives us the option to have automated taxes, to have shipping, to add coupon codes and all sorts of good stuff. Over here under plugins, we'll click on add new and we're going to search for a plugin called WooCommerce. Many of you guys probably already know about this plugin. It's the best one. You know what's really funny? This plugin does what Shopify does for free. In fact, on Shopify's pro plan for $300 a month, WooCommerce does all of that for free. Those poor souls, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know, but don't, it's our secret. You know, don't tell them, you know, we, we, got, we get the free stuff. Let other people pay monthly. So I'll go ahead and click on install. All right, and once it's done, you'll click on activate. Now, when you first activate the WooCommerce plugin, they're going to prompt you uh, to fill out this uh, wizard. However, we can skip all of this because we can fill all this out in the WooCommerce options. So scroll to the bottom here and click on skip setup store details. Uh, if you choose to allow personal data, you can do that. I'm gonna put no thanks. All right, so now this is our, I guess you wanna call it the WooCommerce store online headquarters. Now, one thing guys is they change this interface a lot. So if this screen looks different for you know a few months from now, this tutorial is still up to date. They just tend to move stuff around and adjust their interface uh, quite often. Now we can just skip all this. We're gonna talk more about this in the settings tab. So here we have the WooCommerce settings, and this is where you can enter in like your store address. You'll see all the products. So whenever you create products, uh, you can adjust the, like the product section here. Uh, shipping, this is where you can adjust the shipping rates. Payments, this is where we can adjust payment gateways like Stripe, PayPal, and other, um, you know, stuff like that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on no thanks, get rid of this. These guys are really annoying, you know, they're, they're always asking us to leave reviews and stuff. And then this is the accounts and privacy. I'll talk more about um, privacy policies and stuff like that where we can add. We'll add it on the theme a little bit later in the theme customizer section. This is emails and um, I do have videos on how to make customized really nice emails. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. But uh, yeah, that's just a quick little rundown of the WooCommerce options. We'll come back to this a little bit later in like the last chapter, I believe. But let's create some products. So here we have products and we'll click on all products. Now, whenever you create any products, they'll be listed right here. However, we don't have any products. So let's go ahead and create a product. Click on create product. All right, so go ahead and give your product a name. So this is gonna be men's dress shirt for me. I'm gonna dismiss this. This is just a setup wizard. Now, this right here is the long tail description. This will display actually right here at the bottom. So you'll see we have these tabs that displays at the bottom right there. So this would be something about like maybe your material or something that's really not that, you know, they need to know like dimensions, material, something like that. So I'll just put in some demo text for now. Here I'll put demo, right? And we're gonna scroll down. And now we have two products. Now for this part of the video, we're first gonna create a simple product. In the next step, we will then create a variable product. There are other products that we can create, but I do have a full another video on WooCommerce, and I will leave that in the description below of this video if you guys wanna check it out. So first, let's put in a price, right? This is uh, 50 bucks, but uh, we can schedule a sale. So uh, right now it's on sale for $40, and we can select a sale date. So this is on sale from the 19th to 
the 26th. Now let's say for example, you guys are also selling digital products. Here you can click on virtual and downloadable. Oops, let's go ahead and open that up. And then you can add a file here. So let's say for example, you're just selling like a, a PDF or something. You can click on add a file, choose the file, and then upload that specific file to the product. But I'm actually selling a physical product. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck those. That's just if you are selling uh, digital products. Next we have inventory. So here you can enter in your SKU number, right? And here we have manage stock. Now manage stock will show the quantity of the products. So for example, right here we have the product. Now if we turn on the manage stock, it'll tell the users how many products we have in stock. So that's just a tactic of if you wanna create like scarcity or something, but I'll just put 20. Do you wanna allow back orders for this product? I'm gonna say no, no thank you. Here we have shipping. Now you can enter in the weight and dimensions of the product if you choose to do that. Um, I'm not going to just because it's a shirt and this video can get really complex, you know, for shipping refrigerators or something like that. But uh, I'm just going to leave that uh, blank. Linked products. So next we have upsells and we also have cross sells. And I'll explain the difference between both. An upsell is a product. I'll give you an example here. Scroll down. An upsell is a product that you recommend when someone is viewing a specific product, all right? So when someone clicks on this product, we can recommend additional upsells. Amazon.com does this. They offer uh, various upsells when you purchase something or add something to the cart. A cross-sell is something that you recommend at checkout. For example, here we have this image and you'll see right here how we have what you may also be interested in. So when the user is checking out, you can recommend additional products at checkout. It might be something that you might want to uh, offer to accommodate specific products. For example, if you're selling a shirt, you might want to offer pants or a belt. So that's an example of what a cross sell is. It's recommending products at checkout. Attributes, we're going to skip this because this doesn't apply to simple products. Advanced, you can leave a purchase note saying, thanks for the order, right? This is just a purchase note. When someone purchases it, it will display a purchase note. You can also enable reviews for products. So just like we have on uh, our other website here, I'll go ahead and go to our, uh, our shop page. So here we have our products and you can see we have reviews enabled. So if you wanna have reviews enabled, you can have this checked. If you don't want reviews enabled, you can have it unchecked. Now this is the product short description. The short description will display right here. Now this is the primary description of a product. So make sure it's important. Make sure that it stands out and make sure you do fill it out because this does get picked up by search engines. So uh, just make sure it looks good. You know, here I'll go ahead and just put in uh, just some demo content. Next, we need to add a image for our products. So on the right side, you'll see product image. Click on set product image. And I'll just put in an image of uh, this guy right here. Set product image. Now also, let's say for example, you have additional photos of this product. Here we can add more photos to the product gallery. And, and this one here. Oh wait, so we got this one and this one. Can I hold shift or control? Take that one off. So we got these two. So I'll just add these two as a photo gallery. I'll click on add to gallery. And we'll scroll up and there's one more thing that we need to add. We can add tags. Tags are essentially ways where users can find product easier. So this will be like shirt, right? And also I'll do like men's. So here we go, shirt and then men's, right? We can add these tags. Now we need to enter product categories. Now product categories are very important because we can display specific categories on different pages. For example, we have this shop page right here and you'll see on the left side how we have product categories. Now, if I click on this hat category, this will then display all the products with hats. So that's why you'd want to categorize your products because then this helps users navigate easier. So for example, we have sunglasses or clothing. So this could be something like men's, women's, kids, or whatever. You can also even have filter by color. So there's just a lot of different ways on how you can implement uh, product categories on your sites. So right here, we'll go ahead and put in men's, or we'll just do shirts. And we'll add this new category. And that's it. I think we're all ready to rock and roll. So once you are ready with your product, you'll then click on publish. And we have just created our first product. So let's go ahead and take a look here. 
here we'll click on view product. All right, so here we have the, um, I guess you wanna say breadcrumbs at the top. We have the title of the product. We have the price. Then we have the description. Now remember, the description will display down here, okay? So this is the short product description, right? And then we have the in stock available, and this is referring to this section right here at inventory, okay? And then below that, we have the SKU number, and then we have the description here at the bottom. This description is displaying from here, okay? So that's where basically all that is referring to. Now, also, you've seen that our sale is not displaying because it looks like I didn't put the correct dates because I think it's the 17th today, right? So, or for me, but I'll just put the 16th. So this will make the sale live, right? So now I'll click on update. We'll go back to our product. I'll refresh the page. All right, so now we have the product on sale and we also do have this little uh, sale banner. So that's pretty cool. Now, this product right here, we have a lot of empty space and it's also to the left. So we can adjust that in the Astra theme customizer. So go back to your product and we'll scroll down here. Now for the Astra settings, we can have no sidebar, right? And we can also change the content layout. Now, I just want this to be like a, like maybe boxed, you know? You can kind of go through each of these and see how uh, big it makes it or how it fits your store. But I'm just gonna select box right now and go back and click on updates. Then we'll go back to our products and we'll refresh the page. So I'll refresh this page and there you go. So now we have this product, it's in the center and it just looks really clean, you know? Also, if it did not change, you might need to clear your cache. So that's why we installed this caching plugin. And here we'll just click on purge all. Sometimes when you're working on your website and things don't save, it's not necessarily the website, it's a caching problem. And that's probably the number one biggest problem is people think that um, the website's being weird. And I said, no man, it's the cache. <laughs> you gotta clear the cache. So this is an example of creating a simple product. So we don't have any options, but it's something very standard. It also looks really clean. Now let's move on to the next product and let's create a variable product. So let's go over here to plus new and we'll click on product. We can add a product and pages from the plus new section or from the back end. it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and close these boxes. And this will be men's jacket. Now here we can just put in some description, right? Now for the product data, we're going to select a variable product this time. And you might notice the price disappeared, not to worry. You know, we'll mess around with that in just a bit. We can also go through these other options again, but uh, I think now you guys kind of understand a lot of these. However, I do want to add upsells now. So now we have products, right, to kind of add upsells. So I'll put, what was it the men's shirt? Something like that, men's dress shirt. Now we don't have any other products for cross sales, but uh, hey, why not? I'll just put in men's again, just to give you a visual of what these are and how they will look on your store. Next, we're going to go to attributes. So we need to add attributes and essentially attributes are something like color and size, right? So let's add in some attributes. Here, I'll click on add and this will be size. Now under the value, I'm gonna put small and large. No, no medium, all right? We got no medium. We just have a, uh, you know, just small and large. And uh, we're gonna click on use for variations and click on save attributes. Next, we're gonna enter in color. So if you have different colors of your product, you can enter that here by clicking on add color. And we're gonna do blue, blue and brown. Now this button right here, I'm sorry, this little br bracket, this is above the enter sign and you need to hold shift and press that uh, bracket sign. I'm not sure why, but that's what we use to basically, uh, I guess, to make new values. So uh, that's what WooCommerce wants. So <laughs> I'm just the middle guy here. You know, I just I just report whatever they, they tell me to do. So now that we have that, we'll click on use for variations and click on save attributes. So we have size and color. Now we need to apply the variations to these attributes. So click on variations and under the variation, we'll click create variations from all attributes and click on go. Just say yes, just say, okay. They're like, are you sure you wanna do this? Yeah, we're gonna do it. All right, so now we have four different attributes or variations. We have small blue, small brown, large blue and large brown, right? So for the small blue, 
we need to enter an image, right? So for the upload image, you'll need to put in a, a blue, whatever, right? This is the blue one. And then you'll go ahead and put in the price and the sale price for each individual variation. Now, I'll be very honest with you guys. Variation products take the longest to make and they're very annoying, but uh, you might wanna hire someone. If you have like a hundred products, then you might wanna hire someone to do this because it can be very time consuming. But I'll just put the regular price of a hundred dollars, right? And uh, that's pretty much it. Now, if you do not have a price, guys, the variation product will not work, okay? So you must have a single price or a regular price or else the entire thing, the entire pyramid falls down, all right? Just to be very clear. And then you'll do the same thing for the small brown. So you need to have an image and then you need to also put in a price as well. Just like that. And then large blue. Here, I'll put in a, a blue, right? Or no, did, did we enter the brown? Did I mess up here? No, no, no. Oh yeah, here I did, oh, but small blue, right? Small brown, right? Small blue, okay, 100 bucks, or large blue, there we go. And then also the large brown. Large brown, okay, and then 100 bucks. Now this is where you're going to enter in uh, the product short description. Next, what we'll do is we will add in a product image, right? Now the product image will display on the shop page, okay? So um, this is gonna be like, the, you, need, you need an image to basically represent the product. So we're gonna select this product image. Now let's say for example, they click on this product, right? Which image or which value do you want to display by default? Well, we can display the large or the small blue or the large brown. So you can kind of go through here and set what you want by default. So this is the default value when someone clicks on the product. And then for tags, we'll just put in jacket. I don't know, right? Jacket. And this is a jacket. So we'll create a new category for jacket. And I think we're all ready to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at this product. Let's click on publish. And let's just hopefully everything went good. If anything goes wrong with the variation products or variable products, usually it just won't display. So let's go ahead and take a look at the product. I'll open this in a new tab. All right, so here is an example of the variable product. Man, that's really annoying. We gotta, we gotta change that back. We gotta, we gotta keep doing that here. Uh, and we, when we create a custom shop page, guys, we won't have to do this all the time, but for the free version, uh, if you are using the free version, uh, you'll need to do this uh, for each product. So we'll do like a box, right? Okay, and then we'll go back to update. And now let's just refresh this page, give it that better clean look and voila, looks really nice. So let's take a look. We have the products. Now we have small blue cause that's by default, right? Now we have large blue and large brown. So now you'll see how the image changes, right? And people can kind of, you know, zoom in on the guy and you know, stuff like that. And you'll see how small brown also just displays, you know, like that. So yeah, that's an example of a variable product. This is probably the most difficult thing to make for beginners. I totally understand, but uh, yeah, it just takes a little bit of practice. Now let's say for example, we scroll down here. Now we have the upsell, but you may also like, so that's an example of an upsell. Let's say for example, we add this to the cart. So I'll add this to the cart, right? and click on view the cart. This right here is an example of a cross sell. So we're, we're recommending products at checkout, all right? So you might want to strategize your cart and kind of, you know, strategize your products based off of what you are selling. So if we're selling a jacket, you might want to sell jacket cleaner or buttons or something, you know, that people can use with the jacket. So congratulations, you guys now know how to make products. Now let's add these products to the rest of the home page, which we were designing from the start. So let's click on the home tab. Now we'll click on edit with Elementor. All right, and we are going to scroll to the bottom of the page here where we're working on. And right here, we're going to enter in a new widget. So let's click on add a new section and we'll just enter in this full with section. Click on the elements tab and now we'll type in products. And here we can enter in the products. Now this is an Elementor Pro widget. So we'll take this and we'll drag it. And now you'll see that we have our products being displayed and you can adjust the columns and also the rows. So if you just want like a, you know, three columns and three rows, we can adjust it. 
Also the pagination. So let's say for example, you have many products and you don't want to display all the products. We can display like a little uh, a pagination here at the bottom where they can scroll to different uh, you know, pages and see your products. Under the style tab, we can now style these products. Let's say for example, you know, by just like you guys probably know already, we can just, uh, you know, adjust the, the color and we can go through the font as well by changing this to like enter, all right? Enter. And then we can go ahead and customize the ratings. We can adjust the star size, the spacing, the price, and also the regular price as well. So you do have a lot of customization and options. And I'm not going to go through this, you know, all the way, because I think at this point, you guys know how to customize this and design it to your liking. Now, if you are using the free version of Elementor, we can actually use the uh, essential add-ons grid. So we'll type in grid here. And this is the product grid. And I got to be very honest, personally, I do like the product grid a little bit more because it has a little bit more of a style to it. So I'll click on the plus and click on the little uh, one row, right? And we'll type that in one more time, grid. And then I'll drag in this element. Now, the reason why I like the grid more, I just feel like it just looks a little bit better, you know, and there are different layouts that you guys can use. Like there is a list grid and there is also a uh, view grid. And there's also masonry, which is kind of like a really blocky, choppy style. And then here you have different styles. So you have like reveal style. Uh, there's a bunch of different presets here. You know, you guys can kind of go through these and check these out. Like that, presets, eight. I do like that. It's kind of hip. And remember, you can design and customize every single element. So for example, the add to carts, you can adjust that by going to the style section. And then you can adjust all of this right here, like the button, the sale badge style, uh, the color and topography. So you can adjust everything to your liking. And you know, there is a little bit of work that we probably need to do to make this look exactly like the demo. But I think you guys now know a little bit about this to kind of go on your own, you know, your Merry Christmas way, and you guys can design this to your liking. So uh, personally, I do like the, um, I do like the essential add on a little bit more. I just feel like I like the presets. They are pretty cool. And uh, that's just my personal opinion on that. But you can use either. So this is the pro element. And if you're using elements or the free version, you can go the essentials grid route. All right. So that's pretty much how you can add products to your home page. All right. So now that we are comfortable with adding products and you guys have some experience with the page builder, let's go ahead now and import the demo content. So now I'll be giving you guys the home page, the about us page and the contact us page and showing you how to import them correctly onto your website. Cause I think at this point you guys have experience on how to use the builder and it might just be practice that you all need. And you guys can probably, you know, just fiddle around with stuff and you can get the hang of it. But if you guys go to my website, I'll leave this link in the description of this video. There is a product called the Finley Free Elementor e-commerce layouts. Now this is completely free. It's a digital download and it has a zip file that you guys can download. Look how many comments I have here, 10,000 comments, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, they're pending, you know, I, I just haven't approved them yet. So you'll go to this page and you'll add this to the cart. And then you'll go to view the cart, and you guys can download this product for free. And then you'll just go to proceed to checkout and then you'll place the order. Now, remember this is completely free. So this layout does not cost you anything at all. Once you do that, it'll say, all right, cool. You have the layouts and here is the downloads. You'll just click on the Finley right here. And this will download as a zip file for all of you. So I'll click on okay. Now, once you guys download the layouts, all you need to do is open this zip file. You'll just double click on it and then you'll see Finley. So I'll go ahead and double click on this. Now this contains all the pages for all of you. So it has the home page, the about us page. Uh, and these are the other pages that we'll talk about in just a little bit when we talk about the theme builder, but uh, all we need to do is import like the home, the about and the contact us. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. So what I'll do is I'll click on this little folder and we can upload this and I'll select the file, go to my desktop, open the Finley, and then I'll select the home page and then I'll click on open. All right. So here is the home page. I'll probably fix the title there. I'm not sure why that stuff comes up, but uh, I'll mess around with it and make it a little bit more cleaner. But uh, here I'll just click on insert. And now we're going to insert the home page onto the website. All right. And here is the website. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. 
Now, this is the demo that I created for all of you. Now, this right here is available because I have the pro version installed. If you have the free version installed, some of these titles and also boxes might not display. So you'll just need to go ahead and enter in like the heading text and then just go ahead and edit it there because this is using a pro element. So this is the animated headline. So this is only available for the pro version, but you can substitute it with just a normal heading. All right, so you can still use the layouts. Don't think like, oh, I forgot about the free users. <laughs> like, no, we, we made it for both free and pro users. And here is the new arrivals. We have our products. And right here also, if you guys are using the free version, uh, these will not display because these are the reviews. However, you guys can use the essential add-ons reviews. So for example, they have Woo reviews and other reviews that you guys can use to substitute it. All right, so I just want to make that clear because I don't want anyone to leave me nasty comments saying, "When you just want you just want us to buy the pro." And I said, "No, I, I made it for both people." Here we have the countdown, and we have this other little section uh, for free users as well. This may not display, so you'll just need to go ahead and go to the countdown, and then just put in the countdown widget right here, and then you can adjust this in the style tab to give it that specific look that I have. All right, so I'm so nice. I thought about free and pro users. How about that? And we'll scroll down here and everything looks good. So yeah, that's your whole new website. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and delete everything now. I know that's a big waste of time, but uh, you know, we already have everything. So I'm gonna delete this. I wanna keep this section. I'll show you guys how to drag and drop sections. Uh, this section here, I'm gonna delete it. And I'll delete this section and delete this. And that's pretty much it. Now let's say for example, I wanna take this section and I wanna drag it down. We can click on edit section and hold this, all right? I'm holding it and using the mouse cursor and I wanna drag it right there. And now we can see that it's below there. So you can use this section to introduce your product categories or you may use this section to introduce your product categories. So that's how we basically created this section and now you have a whole layout all for yourself. Now you might notice here that this guy's head is kind of chopped off, but uh, it's actually not. We just have a transparent header on the other website. So uh, we'll talk more about the header in the very next section, but uh, that's pretty much it. So at this point, you guys now have a fully completed uh, homepage that just looks great. And you also have products on your homepage. Now let's do the same thing for the about us section. So next let's go to the about us page so we can actually exit to the dashboard and then we'll go and we'll import the layout for the About Us page. So let's go back to the WordPress logo. Now we can actually use the Finder, but uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, we actually need to uh, edit with Elementor first, but uh, here we'll see the About Us page and click on Edit, and then click on Edit with Elementor. And now we'll do the same thing here. So we're gonna click on this little folder icon and then we'll upload the JSON file. There we go. And I'll click on select file and I will import the about us section. And now I will insert the about us page and click on yes. All right, perfect. So now you'll see that we have this about us page. It has imported correctly. You guys can kind of go through this design, see how we did everything and then kind of mess around with it. Um, I'll have other videos that are a little bit more advanced, but I just didn't want this video to get too long because we do add some really cool techniques and styles to make this specific about us page. Now, if you are using the free version, you'll just need to replace this heading text. So you'll just need to put it in right there and then you'll just need to place the text because this again is a pro element. So uh, yeah, you'll just need to add in heading text. Not too much work. We did everything for you guys, just replace the text. So next let's click on update. Now let's say for example, you wanna scroll through pages without closing everything. You can actually use the finder right here under finder. For example, if you wanna scroll to the home page, I'll just go to home and then click on home. And the finder will actually go and jump to the home page. So this way you don't have to keep closing everything and opening everything back up. You can say, oh, I wanna to go to the home page and then I'll go to the about us page. So the finder is actually pretty helpful. Now to get the pages to show up in the finder, you first have to edit the page with Elementor. So uh, we should be able to find our about us page, but if you go to contacts, it will not be available because we need to first edit the page with Elementor. So let's do that. That's just a shortcut, you know, I'm sure you guys are probably seeing these and like, oh, what is this stuff? So let's click on contact us and we'll click on edit page at the top. And now we'll click on edit with Elementor. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and import that layout. So let's click on the folder icon. Click on import templates, select file, and now we'll import the contact us and click on open. Next, we'll go ahead and insert that layout and click on yes. All right, cool. So now we can take a look at our contact us page. Everything looks good. Everything looks clean and yeah, everything imported correctly. So I hope you guys really enjoy this layout. You know, we spent months or weeks making it actually. We spent two weeks making it just for you guys. Now there is one thing that I do wanna talk about and that is the contact form. Now, if you were using the free version, unfortunately the contact form is not available. However, you guys can actually use a plugin called WP Forms to create a contact form on your website. Now this applies to both free and pro users. So let me go ahead and just show you the contact form really quick. Here I'll click on exit to dashboard and go to the WordPress logo. All right, so from here, we're going to go to plugins and go to add new. Now this does apply to both free and pro users because sometimes with the Elementor contact form, depending on just random server settings, sometimes you may not get the email or may go to spam. So for here, just type in WP forms. And now you can install this plugin here. It's called contact forms by WP forms. Just go ahead and click on install now. The great part about WP Forms is it integrates really well with Elementor. In fact, they do have an integration that works specifically for Elementor. So go ahead and click on activate. Now on the left side, you'll see WP Forms. Just click on all forms. Now I think they created one for us by default. Actually, no, they did not. So just click on create a form and you can just enter a simple contact form. You know, I'm not gonna go through the basics and the advanced part of WP Forms, but you can essentially build your own contact form uh, from scratch. So I'll just click on use template for this simple contact form. And here you can kind of drag in elements, like you can add in a phone number here. Uh, you can put check boxes and stuff like that. Like this would just be like a phone number, right? Phone a number, number, uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There, there we go. Whew. And then we'll just click on save. And then we'll just exit this because we actually added everything we want. And then here we have this little short code. But let's just go back to our site under visit sites and then click on the contact us. Now we'll click on edit with Elementor and we will scroll down and I'll just add the contact form. Maybe I'll just add it down here, you know? So if I type in forms, you will now see WP forms widget. So this works specifically for Elementor and I can take this and just drag it down here. And for the form, I will then select the simple contact form that we created. So I'll put in my first name. So here we go. Howdy. And then I'll submit the form. So there is the simple contact form notification. And there you go. So now we have received that email from our websites. Now, one small thing that we also need to add to our menu is the pages that we created. So now that we have the home, the about, and the contact, when we install the WooCommerce plugin, some of the pages were automatically created for us. So now we need to assign those to the menu. You know, like your shop page and your category page and your my account page or whatever. So let's go over here to the appearance and click on menus. Now here we have pages, right? So for example, their accounts, you know, the checkout, the cart page, you can now assign these to the menu. I think just maybe the my account and the shop page is good enough, right? So let's go ahead and put the shop right there. And then maybe we can even put the my account there. Now, one other thing too is I want the A capitalized just because in, you know, in web design, that's what we do. I don't know why, it's just how everything works. So I wanna go ahead and click on this arrow and I wanna capitalize that A. You can also change the title for your pages. So let's say for example, your page is about us. You can change that to just about if you wanna, you know, if you wanna approach that route. And then we'll click on save menu. All right, cool. So now we have the home, the about, the shop, the my account and the contact. So if I click on this, your users will now have full access to the shop and they can click on my account. And this is actually created automatically for you. So now you can see the orders, they can see their account details. And this is created automatically for all your customers where they can see their orders, they can update their payment methods and all that really cool stuff. 
Okay, so now that you guys have a good understanding of how to design your websites, I do wanna talk about the My Accounts, the Checkout, and the Cart page as well. We do also have templates for you uh, for those specific parts. Now, when you install the WooCommerce plugin, it'll automatically create your Cart page and your Checkout and also your My Accounts. Now, I just wanna walk you guys through really quickly on how to design this page. Now you can design and customize all of the pages and we do have templates for you guys as well in the, uh, in the folder that you guys can download on my website. So first thing is if you wanna get rid of this cart, you'll go to edit page. Now during the creation of this video as well, Elementor Pro released a new feature for the My Accounts, I'm sorry, for the cart and the checkout. And I'm going to just show you guys the feature just so you guys understand what it does. Uh, but first off, let's go ahead and disable this title on the bottom right and click on update. Now, if you wanna edit the cart page, all you'll need to do is at the top, you're gonna to see edit with Elementor. Go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. And this will actually allow you to start designing and customizing your cart page. And you can do the same thing for the checkout and also the uh, my accounts. So here we have the cart page. Now I'm using a, um, a template that I used. So for example, uh, the template that I gave you guys in the folder, you guys can upload it here by just going to upload, select files, and doing the same thing we did before. So you'll see here how we have the cart page, and this is the checkout, and also we do have the my account there as well. So I can just click on open and insert this onto my uh, cart page. So here we go, we have the cart page. Oh wait, no, here it is, cart page, insert, and I'll click on yes. All right, so this is the cart page, and of, and of course you guys can fully customize this. Like for example, if you wanna stretch this section full width, we can say I want to stretch this section all the way, and then it'll be a full with uh, uh, shopping cart. Also, we do have that other previous shopping cart, and you guys can go ahead and delete this, and delete this, and delete that, and delete that, because we already have this. Now, I do want to point out something else that a lot of people don't know about Elementor, is you can actually change the fonts and the colors within this short code. So for example, if I click on style here, you'll see text color, right? I can change this text color to like green or something, right? Like a green, and you'll see how this all changes to green. Now remember, these are controlled by the theme customizer, okay? So to change the button and the fonts for the products, you'll do that through the theme customizer. And also here we have the topography. You can go ahead and change this to whatever you'd want. Now, while you're working on it, I'll be very honest, it does get a little glitchy. You know, it does kind of hide it sometimes. But uh, here I'll change this to bold, so you guys will get a better example. Here we go, bold, and I'll just like click around. Just click on the website, and then it'll repropagate. So it it does that sometimes, and uh, if it does that, just click on it, and then you can change it. So this is how you can go ahead and change the fonts and the colors for the uh, uh, cart. You can also do this for the my accounts and also the checkouts. I also do wanna talk about the checkout page as well. So you can go ahead and customize the checkout page the same way you customize the cart page. So I'll go ahead and click on proceed to checkouts and this will bring you to the cart page. Now, sometimes guys, when you are using, uh, or you click on edit with Elementor and nothing happens, you actually need to click on edit page here and this is the way to actually edit the checkout page. I know it's a little weird, but uh, there is some sort of bug sometimes where you click on it and it doesn't work. You'll just click on edit with Elementor here once you click on edit page, and this will then allow you to edit the page with Elementor. Also make sure to disable the title at the bottom right, that will get rid of that, uh, it'll get rid of this checkout, um, checkout title. So I'm gonna click on update, and I'm gonna edit with Elementor. Okay, now just like we did before, how we can change the fonts and the colors for the cart page, we can do the same thing here for the actual uh, checkout page by going to style. And then again, we can adjust the colors and we can change the fonts here. Now you guys, um, the free users can have this feature. So uh, you don't have to be a pro user in order to change this feature. However, uh, Elementor Pro does now have a cart widget as well. So here they have a new cart widget. And just remember, this is in beta guys. So they're having like a sticky right column. Uh, they're adding in like a bunch of different features where you can, you know, uh, add colors to this section or this section or this section. So you will have a lot more customization with the cart page. So uh, for example, just like we did before, uh, the cart totals, you can change the cart totals to something else. You can change the text. 
and uh, you know you can kind of mess around with these options here on your own free time now i'm probably going to make another video dedicated to this because uh, we can talk about how to make a really nice checkout form with this probably in another hour but i don't want to make this tutorial too long and also this is in beta at the time of making this video so i don't want to touch base on it too much because it's not yet in a stable release so uh, i'm just going to skip this but i just want to introduce you to this that this is going to be available for pro users so I'm going to go ahead and delete this section now, and then I'll click on update. All right, in this part of the video, I'm going to quickly touch base on mobile optimization. Now, mobile optimization is very important because there are more mobile users than desktop users. So you really want to make sure that your website looks good for all mobile devices. So let's go ahead and run you through on how to optimize your site for mobile. First, click on edit with Elementor, and now we're going to optimize this site for mobile. So now we have these icons here at the bottom and this says responsive mode. So let's click on responsive mode. Now this is what your website looks like on a desktop view, what it looks like on a tablet view, and this is the view from a mobile device. Now the layout that we created for you guys, we have optimized it for mobile so it'll look good for all devices. You can see that everything looks really nice, everything looks really clean, and uh, yeah, you'll just need to go ahead and go through this and make sure that everything looks really nice. Now let's say for example, your site is not optimized for mobile. And I wanna show you guys quickly on how to adjust things and how to change things for your mobile devices. So the first thing is let's optimize this site for tablet. So let's go back to the site that we were creating on and we're gonna click on responsive mode. So now I wanna click on tablets. So you'll see here how this looks pretty clean. However, the 50% off doesn't really look good. And in fact, it's broken. We can actually hide specific elements for specific devices because sometimes you just don't need to have specific elements on mobile devices. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this on the pencil icon. And I just wanna hide this. I wanna hide this for tablet users only because I just feel like this just doesn't really, you know, we just don't need it to be honest. We just want the, the shop now button. So to hide an element for devices, Click on the advanced tab, and then we're gonna click on responsive, and I wanna hide this on tablet. And I probably also want to hide this on mobile as well. So now you'll see that this has that uh, gray out field where uh, this will now not display for the tablet or the mobile. Let's keep scrolling down here. So this is actually not bad. I mean, I think this section looks good. I mean, for tablet users, it's definitely not bad. And um, I think that this looks just fine. Uh, this section right here might be a little bit too big. You can see all these sections might be too big. In fact, we probably don't even need this section because we already have the product categories here. So let's hide this entire section. Now I'm gonna click on these six dots right here, go to the advanced tab, go to responsive, and I wanna hide this for tablet. And we're gonna come back to mobile. I don't know how it looks yet on mobile, but let's just go ahead and optimize it for tablet first, and then we'll come back to it. So now you'll see this whole section's grayed out. And that makes a lot more sense. Now let's say for example, you guys want to change the position of this. I'll click on this pencil icon. And then for the alignment, you can see tablet is selected. And we can change the alignment over here to, you know, to the left side, to the right side. Now remember, we are adjusting this only for the tablets when we are in responsive mode. So uh, this will not reflect on the desktop version. So next we have this section here, and we have a few options on how to optimize this for mobile. Number one, we can just disable specific boxes, you know, for mobile devices, or we can stretch out these two bottom uh, rows to make it look more, you know, more structured and more proper. Let me go ahead and show you guys how to extend these rows really quick. I'll click on this little uh, column here, and now you'll see that for tablet, we have this tablet devices selected. So now we can kind of push push this to kind of, you know, make them have like more of a, you know, more of a structured style. So here you'll see for tablet as well, we can push this and just kind of leave it like that. So you do have an option to make it, you know, make it look a little more structured or you're gonna say, you know what, that just doesn't work out for me. Uh, I just wanna hide this again. So we can go ahead and hide these columns by clicking on the column and doing the same thing as before going to responsive and we can go to hide on tablet as well. So that's just an option if you know if 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 you're making a website, don't think that you have to disable options. You can change the position, you can kind of change the size of the text as well to make it more responsive. Now also really quickly, uh, I want to click on edit intersection here and there is an option where you can inverse sections. So here we have the inverse tablet. 
where we can inverse stuff. And this is actually pretty useful if you guys have images with text that are that are stacked up against each other. Sometimes you can switch it around and see if that works out for you. So that's just an option that I just want to introduce you guys to. And then just keep scrolling to the bottom of the page and just kind of keep looking for uh, fixes on your e-commerce websites that you can optimize for mobile. Now we went through the tablets. Let's go ahead and go through the mobile device. So the mobile section is a little bit more important in my opinion because there are more mobile users than there are tablet users. But uh, let's just say, for example, you want to edit a specific section. Uh, you can now see that we have the, um, the mobile preview selected. So you can adjust the alignments for the phone device. Also, if you click on style and go to text and topography, you'll then now see that we have the option selected for mobile. So you can change the size of the text for mobile devices. So if something's like too big, which happens a lot, you can adjust it here on mobile. So you're just gonna go ahead and scroll down. Now we went ahead and we disabled that background image because you can see here how the background image just doesn't really fit well because it kind of stands out alone. So we went ahead and we hid that. We also hid the 50% because remember earlier how it just was below the button and it just didn't make a lot of sense. Now I can actually put this maybe above the button and then maybe center align it and um, enable this you know, on the website again. But I just felt like this was just a lot more cleaner and it just looks a lot more friendlier. You know, we have the shop now button. So uh, over here as well, we can now see that these are stacked on the top of each other. And this looks clean, you know, it looks pretty simple. But uh, this section right here, you know, it's a little confusing, you know, it doesn't look well. So we can adjust this. So let's click on the pencil icon here. And uh, you know, there's a few ways on how we can do this. You know, we can align it to the center and maybe we can even change the text or the width, you know, like that. Or we can say, you know what, um, you know, I want to change the text to a different size. You know, maybe we can, you know, push it like that. But if you do that, you want to change the width as well. So just remember that uh, when you are optimizing it, you have this mobile preview here, and this allows you to just optimize it for a mobile. So I do think that is a lot nicer than what we had before. All right, and let's keep scrolling down here. We have this section. Now we disabled this for tablet devices because it just didn't look well, it was too big, but I think this looks a lot nicer. You know, it's more structured, it's more compact. And I do like the, like the, the way this looks. Uh, this section as well looks pretty good. You can see this section is uh, in center align that looks a lot nicer. Uh, we could also, you know, center align this section as well for mobile devices. So I'll click on the column icon here. And for the vertical align, I wanna put this as middle and also center. So now that kind of centers it for the mobile device. And let's keep scrolling down. And I think that's everything, you know, I think that looks good. Everything else is, uh, these are all structured really nicely. I do like that. So there's just some small modifications that we could have done to make this a little bit better. But overall, I think you guys get the points. I think you guys can understand how to optimize your site for mobile. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a lot larger now by, uh, well, first I'll update this. And now let's go back to responsive mode. So let's just take a quick look at the site just to make sure that everything is still correct. Uh, right away, you'll notice that the best 2020 collections is still on the left side. However, for the mobile device, we put it in the center, remember? So uh, it, it only reflects on the uh, mobile devices. We'll keep scrolling down. Sometimes guys, I gotta be honest, sometimes when I'm working on Elementor, in rare cases, it'll actually mix up the um, It'll actually mix up the mobile and the desktop. If that ever happens, just go back and change it again. Sometimes it might be weird, but uh, overall you should see it work just fine. So now if you guys are still not sure if your site is properly optimized for mobile, Google actually has a mobile friendly test where you can insert your URL and you can get tips from Google to see if your website is optimized for mobile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this here and let's see if our demo website passed the test. All right, cool. So now you can see that the website has passed the Google mobile friendly test. So it says that this page is easy to use on mobile devices. And guys, that's very important because there was a new algorithm update that says if your site is not mobile friendly, they will push you lower down in the rankings. So you really want to make sure your site's optimized for mobile devices. I really hope you guys enjoyed this section. I showed you guys how to customize the cart, the checkout, and also the My Account. I've also showed you guys how to optimize your site for mobile. Don't forget to like this video and let's go ahead and move on to the next section. 
All right, so your website's coming along. You know, it looks good. We have products and uh, we're, 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 we're progressing here. So let's move on to step four and let's go ahead and introduce you all to the theme customizer. And I'll also touch base on what plugins are. Now the theme customizer controls parts of the website that the page builder might not. So let me go ahead and show you guys a little bit about the theme customizer. All right, so in this section, I'll be talking all about the theme customizer. I'll also be touching base on plugins. So to access your theme customizer, you'll click on customize here at the top. Now in short, the theme customizer controls parts of the website that the page builder normally does not. For example, we have this header and we can adjust this header using the theme customizer. It also controls parts of the blog and also the shop page as well. But let's just go ahead and dive into the header first. So here we have uh, the header builder and here we can go ahead and build out a custom header. For example, if you want to go ahead and add a widget, you'll click on this little plus and you have some widgets to go through. Now, this is the free version of Astra. They do have more elements in the pro version, but you don't really need to buy the pro version to be honest. Let's say, for example, you want to add a button, right? So I'll take this button and I'll uh, here we go. I'll drag it over here behind the primary menu. So now you'll see that we have a button here and we can design this button by just clicking on it. And here you can change the text and you can also put a link maybe to your shop page, right? So for example, this is my website and here I have the shop page. I'll just grab shop page one. This is my demo website, and I'll copy this and then I can go ahead and paste that link there like that. Now you can always design this button as well. You can design the text color, the background color, and you can also give it a border radius. So you can have it a square or also a circular style if you want to go that route and these are just design options so you can kind of design the padding make it larger and stuff like that so let's say for example you want to add another element you'll just click on the plus section and then maybe here we can add in like uh i don't know the like social icons or whatever and we'll place that uh right over here right yeah, I mean, whatever, you know, you guys get the point. And then if we click on the specific elements, we can then go ahead and add in more social websites. And then uh, we can design this as well under the design tab. So uh, you can design and customize this any which way you want. And for the design, or I'm sorry, the general, you can always add in more social, I, uh, I guess I want to say social media websites or social apps or whatever you want to call them. So yeah, you can go ahead and go through uh, those options. You can also do something like show label, which I believe it shows the actual uh, website. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and stuff like that. Now this actually might be more helpful on a different row because you can see how this row is just too cluttered. So I can take this and drag it to the top like that. And what that will do is that will create a new row. And then also you can design and customize each row color. So for example, we have this top row now, right? If I click on this gear icon right here, uh, we can go to the design section and here we can design and customize it with the background section. Now let's say for example, you want a uh, transparent menu, very similar to our demo here. So let me go back to our home. Here we have this transparent menu. So there's nothing there, right? We can do this for uh, our, our menu right here. So uh, if you click on the background, all you need to do is reduce the opacity of the background to zero. So for example, I can take this and drag it all the way down. And now you'll see that uh, we have these icons here and now this is transparent. And you can do the same thing for this middle row. So for the middle row under the design tab, you can go to the background and just make that zero again. Now you might notice how we have this little tiny border and that is from this here. So you can just change that to zero and that gets rid of the border. So now there is no border. So you can do that for the first one and also for the second one by just removing the border like that. And if we look at the website now, you'll kind of see that uh, it looks very similar to our other website just because we move the image a little bit. But uh, overall, it's pretty much the same exact thing. Now, if you do wanna add in a gradient on your background, you can click on gradient here. And let's first go ahead and turn this color back on here or the background color, the opacity, there we go. You can add in a gradient, which essentially just uses like a two colors, you know? So you can see here how now the menu is gradient. So you can add in a gradient. You can also add in an image. However, uh, you might have to have a really good image that'll work because uh, it'll just look really stretched out and really ugly, but you still have the option to do that. Let me go ahead and change this back to 
zero. That is just not working. Ugh. There we go. And actually, let's just change it back to white. I like white. I think white looks a little bit nicer. Here we go. Change that back to white. And also, uh, we'll go ahead and show this. And we'll do the same thing for the second menu right here. And we'll change that also back to white like that. So yeah, you guys get the idea. Now here we have site logo, a site title and logo. Now this is where you can upload your logo. Now uh, I do not recommend getting free logos. You might've seen videos saying get a free logo. Uh, you cannot use those logos legally because you cannot copyright them. And uh, yeah, so they're pretty much useless. I recommend going to websites like fiverr.com. You guys can go to uh, my affiliate link right here. I think I do have a discount code. I think I'll leave it in the description. It's like 10% off your first order, but you guys can get logos for little as $5. So uh, do not use free logos because you cannot use those uh, in the real world. They're just kind of like for fun. Go ahead and get rid of that. But uh, here I just type in logo, right? And then you can actually set your budgets to something like uh, zero to 10 bucks, right? And these guys are actually really good. You know, to be honest, I got my logo from these guys. And you can see that they make some really nice logos for as little as $10. And just make sure that it's a unique logo. Make sure they're not giving you that they've, you know, a logo they've given to a, a thousand other people because then your logo is really not unique. So yeah, you can go ahead and check that out. It's a great resource to get logos and actually get help for your website as well. So now that you guys understand a little bit about the menu, we can go ahead and go on to the next sections. So these other ones are just very, you know, very, I guess you want to say like uh, ideal, like blog. You can adjust the blog here. We're not going to really cover the blog in this video because um, that can really make this video another one hour long, but we're just going to skip the sidebar and the blog. Uh, but I do want to talk about the footer and also the WooCommerce section, which is the shop page. So first let's go to footer builder. So when we click on footer builder and now it takes us to the bottom of the page. Now you notice on this website right here, if we scroll to the bottom, we have, this is our footer. Now this is a custom footer that was created with the Elementor Pro version. And we will cover the theme builder in the very next section so we can have custom headers and footers with the Pro version. However, you can also use the theme. Some people decide to use the theme, whether you're a Pro user or free user, you can still use the Astra for uh, your footer. So for example, you know, we can put in HTML one, and this is just text. Don't let HTML scare you. This is where you can just put in text. Like uh, here, I'll just grab in some demo text. And this could be like about us, right? So this can be something about your company or whatever you want to talk about. You can also align it like that. And then here you can add in another widgets or a HTML. So a widget is essentially blocks now. So there was a large update with WordPress and they are now kind of phasing out uh, widgets with blocks, or they're calling them block widgets now, but they're essentially blocks. So let's click on, got it. Now blocks are just basically widgets, except they're using sort of uh, the Gutenberg uh, blocks as well. But uh, let's say for example, you wanna add in something here, like an image. You can just put in an image here. Maybe this can be like a link to something. I don't know, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of widgets and stuff like that. And also you can keep doing that through other various parts. So here widget two, and you can go ahead and add a block. And this could be like a paragraph, maybe something like about us, right? Or I don't know, something like that. So about us, and then you can talk about your company or whatever you want to talk about, stuff like that. Now there are other various widgets that you guys can use. Like there's a Facebook like box. There is a lot of other widgets that you can download for free in the plugin section. So that's kind of why I introduced these at the same time because they kind of go hand in hand. But uh, yeah, just like you did with the header, you know, in the footer, you can add widgets and stuff like that. So just kind of mess around with this on your own free time, get comfortable with it. But uh, that's how you can design the footer with the Astra theme. Now let's talk about the actual shop page. So let's go ahead and go back and we have WooCommerce. And if we click on WooCommerce, let's go ahead and scroll up. Let's click on product catalog. So the theme customizer also allows you to customize the shop page if you decide to use the default shop page. So you can uh, take out reviews. For example, we have like these ratings. You can take out the ratings, um, the add to carts. You can move that around to somewhere else. You can have a specific amount of columns. You can also disable the sidebar if you don't want to have a sidebar. So there are just some few options here that you guys can kind of go through and check out uh, for your shop. 
And also it works for single products. So for single products as well, if you we click on this, you can disable breadcrumbs. So you don't want breadcrumbs, you can go ahead and disable the breadcrumbs, which essentially was just these links right here above the uh, title. So there's just a, just a few options here that you might wanna go through. Also store notice, this is actually pretty cool. Let's say for example, you have a sale, you can enable the store notice. And this would be something like uh, gets 20% off, 20% off uh, the store with coupon code Daryl, right? And you can add a store notice here at the top. Now let's go to the cart page. So with the cart, you can enable or disable cross sells if you choose to do that. But let's go to the checkout now. So the checkout is the last form that people go to. And there is a few things here I do want to talk about you might need to add in a terms and conditions page. So for example, if someone buys something on your website, you might wanna create your own terms and conditions page and also a privacy policy page as well. Now there's two websites you guys can use. You can use this one, it's a free terms and conditions generator and all you need to do is just input your information. I will leave links to these in the description of this video. They're free resources, you just need to make sure that you enter in your information. Also the privacy policy, you can go ahead and input your information and it will generate your privacy policy. So once you create your privacy policy and also your terms and conditions, all you need to do is assign that page to this specific part. So I'll go ahead and create a page really quick. All right, I'll go to plus new and page. And then this will be like my privacy policy or maybe even terms and conditions. And I'll just paste it in there like that. And then I'll publish and publish. And now if we go back to our privacy policy page, we can then assign the privacy policy page to this. So what that means, they'll have to actually check mark that they've actually read the privacy policy and they'll have to check mark as well the terms and conditions page. And uh, yeah, so that's just a few things that you can add to your e-commerce websites. I think you might re really wanna think about your terms and conditions because if someone buys something and then they have a problem, you know, maybe you can say, well, in the terms and conditions, we don't offer refunds or, or that's really up to you and your business. Now these other options right here are pretty much just not really needed too much because again, the page builder controls most of the work. Now one thing also as well, uh, I didn't really upload my logo. Now right here under select logo, I can upload the logo. In the images I gave you guys, uh, I use this logo that we created right here and I'll just select that. And we can crop that image, but I kind of want everything to display. Click on crop. And now we need to adjust the size of this logo because it's a little bit too big. So let's go ahead and reduce the size of that. Something a lot smaller, that's perfect. And then also we will take out the display site title. So we don't really need that as well. And then we'll click on publish. So in a nutshell guys, that is pretty much the actual uh, theme customizer. Um, just go through some of these options, see if they apply to you. But essentially this controls the shop page, it controls the header and footer, and also the archive pages, which is like the blog archive and your categories and stuff like that. Now let's go ahead and talk about plugins really quick. So let's go ahead and close this. So in short guys, plugins are basically applications for your e-commerce websites. However, I do wanna give you a word of caution. Do not add too many plugins because that might cause conflict and errors. Try to keep your plugins under 10 per website. So for example, under search plugins, I'll type in notifications. And there are tons and tons of integrations with WooCommerce and plugins. Like for example, we have this uh, floating notification bar, which adds a bar at the top. We also have a push notification. So you ever been to a website where you have to accept push notifications? Well, you can have that on your website. Also this one right here, notification X, this will allow sales pop-ups on your websites. And we can click on screenshots to get an idea here. You guys ever been to those websites where it says like, oh, hey, you know, someone just purchased something. You can see here how this plugin will actually add that to your website. So there are just tons of plugins to go through. Now, some of these plugins, they also add widgets. So when you install a plugin, it'll create widgets for you as well. But um, really quick, let me just go to live chat really quick. If you guys wanna have live chat on your website, you can also just type in live chat. And there again is tons of plugins out there with live chat, uh, Tidio chat is probably one of the more popular ones. Also uh, talk, this is also a really popular one. And again, this adds live chats to your websites. Now there is one plugin I do wanna talk about really quick, and this is the email customizer. 
Now, to be quite honest, the default emails with WooCommerce are very, very ugly. And you guys can use Yaymail. This is a really cool plugin that I found. And you guys can install this and use this on your website. So what this will do is that this will take your boring, ugly uh, WooCommerce emails and it'll turn them into something a lot more modern and nicer. And the great part is you guys can fully design and customize the emails that are sent uh, to your customers. So for example, yay mail, I'll click on start customizing. Now you don't have to do this. I'm just giving you a brief kind of example of how all this works. So here is our current uh, email, and this is what's being sent to all of our customers. And with this plugin, you can go ahead and change like the background color to kind of match your brand. So I think we're using like that AD0001, right? Or something like that. I think, I think that's it, right? This one, or is that it? I don't know, it's something like that. So we can kind of modify and design and customize our, uh, our email box. So for example, if we wanna add in like an image, we can drag an image there and then upload it. Maybe here we can, you know, change the image, add something, and you know, it's a drag and drop builder. So you guys can kind of understand how all of this works and then align it. And it's very similar to Elementor. Now we can click on that and then maybe even add in, you know, a text list or something. So I'm just introducing you all to this plugin because I think that uh, these default emails are pretty ugly. And with this, you can change the fonts, you can change the color, and you can customize the emails to match your brand. So that's just something to look out for. So plugins are very helpful. They're a big part of WordPress and uh, with no plugins, uh, WordPress would be very limited, but there is more than 50,000 uh, WordPress plugins. So there's usually something to meet for everyone's needs. All right, party people, I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. Now in this next section, we are going to introduce you all to the Elementor theme builder. Let's go. So your website's coming along pretty nicely. Let's move on to step five, where we'll be talking about the Elementor Pro version. Now, if you guys do decide to purchase Elementor Pro, we do have a link in the description of this video. If you guys do decide to use it, it does help us to continue to make these tutorials and layouts for you all for free. So for the Elementor Pro version, we'll be first creating a header and a footer, and then I'll be showing you how to create a custom shop page, a custom product page, and also a custom product category page for your e-commerce website. You guys ready? Let's get started. So let me explain the theme builder. Every theme for WordPress has a preset style for your shop page and your blog and other various parts of your website. You cannot edit these normally and these are pre-built by the theme. That's why there are so many different type of WordPress themes. However, the Elementor Theme Builder allows you to build each page with the builder from scratch regardless of the theme settings. Basically, you can completely build any page from the ground up, overriding the theme settings just in case you want to fully customize every part of the website with no restrictions. I find many people tend to do this because they want to match the color scheme and the design of the website so it all matches up in the end. All right, welcome to the Elementor Theme Builder tutorial. Now in this part of the video, I'll be explaining how to use the Elementor Theme Builder. I'll be showing you how to create custom product pages, custom shop pages, and custom headers and footers. For example, you'll see here how we have this header with a transparent menu. Now notice if you go to another page here, how it's now a uh, white background. So this was all done with the Elementor Theme Builder. We actually have two specific headers on this website. Also, if you go to our shop pages, I'll just go to shop page three. You'll notice that this is a custom shop page. So uh, here we have our products. We have this custom uh, sidebar at the end. And uh, yeah, and we do have a few shop pages. So this is shop page three. And this is another shop page that we created. So uh, you'll see that we have products and we have this really cool uh, sidebar right here. Not necessarily filters, but we just decided to add in promotions for this. So it just really depends on what the user wants. So you can either have the sidebar widgets or promotional uh, sidebar. Also the product page. So uh, the Elementor Theme Builder can create custom uh, product pages as well. And we will actually give you guys these templates for free in this video, just to help you guys you know, follow along. And also it's like, it's appreciation for you guys watching this video uh, this far. So uh, yeah, you will receive two different uh, product pages and also uh, four different shop pages. Now, in order to get the Elementor Theme Builder, you guys will need to purchase the Elementor Pro version. So if you guys go to any of their plans and you purchase them, uh, you guys will get access to the Theme Builder. So the Theme Builder is included in all of their plans. Uh, you guys can use our link in the description and it does help us to continue to make these tutorials for you guys all for free and give you guys free stuff, you know, and 
free free designs. You know, web design is not cheap, guys. <laughs> it's really not. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So here we go. We'll first go to our dashboard. And the first thing that we're going to do in this video, we will first create a custom header and a custom footer using the Elementor Theme Builder. All right, and we will scroll down to templates and click on Theme Builder. Now we're first going to just make a standard header and footer. And what I want you to do is click on this um, new Theme Builder. Uh, this is like the old one, it's depreciated and it's been depreciated for about a year already, but uh, they still have it. But just go ahead and click on try it now. All right, so now you'll see that we have this header and footer and all of these um, different pages. So the theme builder essentially will create a specific uh, style for specific pages. Let's just first start with the header. So I'll click on this plus icon. Now we also have access to a lot of these really cool templates that Elementor has provided us. So uh, they do have quite a bit here and you guys can just kind of go through some of these and check it out. Uh, what I'll first do is I'll just keep this very basic. I'll just uh, click on insert and I'll just give you a brief overview about the theme builder and how it works. So now you'll notice that we have this specific header, right? Now you can design and customize this just like we did on the current website. So you can click on this and you can go to the style tab and you can change the colors, the fonts, uh, the padding, you can add in animations, just like you're building a normal website. Except now we can do it for the menu, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. Now also when you're using the theme builder, you will have access to new elements. You'll notice right here how we have site logo, site title, page title, and also a nav menu. Now the nav menu is pretty important. So this is the actual menu. So I'll delete this. And let's say for example, you created a menu, right? And you wanna apply that menu to the actual header. Now you'll see that the menu that we have created or that I have created in my website is now available. Now, if you have different menus, you can display different menus for your uh, header. You can also have specific headers for specific pages if you want to be very dynamic. So, you know, we can change this to vertical. I don't think that would look good. Yeah, that, that would not look good here, you know. But, uh, you know, we can change it to uh, overline. I think that's where it goes above. You know, yeah, that doesn't really work out. Maybe just underline and then change the color to our brand, right? Something like some sort of red. Ugh, that, that's, a, that's the hover option. So here we have hover and now we've got to change that to like black or something. That, that looks just terrible. <laughs> so that looks a little bit better, right? So you can see how we can, you know, design this and stuff like that. Now also here we have this button and this can go directly to your shop page. Now, if you don't know how to do that, we can go to our demo website here. And uh, for example, I'll just pull up a shop page that I created. And uh, you know, I'll just copy this link. And then you just go ahead and paste that link in there like that. There we go. So that's pretty much it. And then you can paste that link. And then if they click on it, they will then go to this specific shop page on your website. Now there is one element here that I do want to talk about. I'm going to quickly go ahead and delete this. And this, this is the menu cart. Now let's say for example, people are shopping on your e-commerce website. You really want to make sure that you have your menu cart available because uh, when people add something to the carts, they'll get this really cool little like pop up here and they'll kind of notify them of what's in the cart for your e-commerce store. And just remember, you can fully customize this. There is tons of options here to make it uh, you know, bigger, to change the position. And also you can change the style, you can make it bigger or smaller and all these other uh, cool options. So that's just a quick little rundown of how to use the, the Elementor theme builder for your header. Now let's say, okay, well, we created this. How do we actually apply this to the website? Well, let's do that. On the bottom right here, we have publish. So go ahead and click on publish. Now, when you click on publish, you'll get this display conditions. So where do you want this header to be? Well, we can go ahead and decide where we want this header. So here I'll click on add condition. So here we have the entire site, right? Or you can say, I want it only on the WooCommerce pages. So for example, I want to take this header and apply it only to the shop page. And then we can create an additional header for the landing page or whatever, you know? So there's a lot of different ways on how to approach this. However, I will just go ahead and put on uh, entire sites and click on save and close. And there is our new menu. Now, of course, we need to make some changes to it. We need to add some padding to the top and the bottom because it's too it's too thin, right? But if we go to any page on our website, we will now see this menu uh, across the entire website. So yeah, you can basically add a custom header and then we can also add a custom footer 
which we'll do in the very next section. So let's go to dashboard here. And it's the same thing, you know, so for the theme builder, we'll go and click on that. And for some reason, we have to keep clicking on try it now. I don't know why guys, <laughs> sorry, that's it's out of my control, you know, I'm, I'm just the messenger here. And then we'll click on footer and click on little plus. So now we can go ahead and use some of these footers right here. So they have a lot of different footers. And all you would need to do here is just go ahead and insert that footer onto your site and then do the same exact thing for the uh, the footer. However, I did create a header and footer for all of you that I would like you guys to import to help you know make your site a little bit more consistent with the brand. So right here we have this little uh, import, right? And we'll click on select file. Now in the folder that I gave you all, you will see a header and a footer builder, Jason. So go ahead and click on open. Now we see the footer. So go ahead and click on insert. All right, and here is the footer that we have created for you all. So we have these columns and we have an email subscribe. We have some social icons. We have this really cool section here, which is call to actions. And what we did to be really creative is we did not want to use a plugin. So we kind of used a call to action here and we added in the, um, I guess you wanna say the call to action uh, hover. So when you hover over it, it will then show the specific element. Now, what you can do here is you can link these to your, uh, your social, uh, I guess your, your social profiles by going over here to contents and going to link, right? So here you can link your social profiles. So that's just a really creative way how we thought to introduce uh, you know, social platforms without using a plugin. Now there is one other thing too. So we just use icon list here and all you need to do guys is just go ahead and link them to that specific page. So remember earlier how I said, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. It's just really all about what gets the job done. We use the icon list because the icon list is the most responsive. We use the text modules, but when you have a bunch of text modules stacked against each other, on different devices, it doesn't always come out the best. So that's why we use that specific uh, module. So yeah, I know we're really, really creative there, but uh, you're welcome. And here we'll click on a uh, publish here at the bottom. And the same thing, you know, I just wanna display this on the entire website. I don't think people would want different footers on different parts of the page that it really just wouldn't look good. Now, we actually added this to the bottom of the website, but I also do wanna use the template that I created for you guys in the header. So let's do that. Let's go back over here to dashboard. Let's not look at the website yet. I don't want to. I don't want to show you. Let's let's make sure. Let's add the both header and the footer, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll take a look there. So here we go. Try it now. And then for the header option, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and delete this because uh, this is just just it's just it's just not working out. You know, it just looks bad. We're not. It's not working. Instead, we're going to import that header template that I created for all of you. And uh, yeah, that'll look a lot nicer than the current one. So here we go. I'll click on import templates, select the file and select the header theme and then open it. Now we'll go ahead and go to the, uh, where's it, the header and insert that. All right, and next we'll just click on publish and we will add this on the entire websites. Save and close. All right, now this looks a lot like the demo, right? I mean, the header would just made such a big difference. So now we have this landing page here at the top and we also have this really creative footer here at the bottom. I'll probably fix this, guys. Sorry, I don't know what that's about. Some, you know, something weird, you know. <laughs> but you guys get the point. You guys can easily just delete that or change it or whatever. So now that we've created a custom header and footer, now let's go ahead and create a custom shop page, right? So we go to our shop page. Uh, we'll now see that we have the header at the top right here, and we also have our footer here at the bottom. But the problem is this just doesn't really fit well now. It just doesn't sit well. We need to kind of make it look more modern and need to kind of add in like the style that we're using, right? So let's go ahead and go to dashboard. And then we'll go to templates and theme builder. And we'll go to try it now. Now, just like we did for the header and the footer, we can now do this for the shop page. So let's click on add new. And we will see it's called the product archives. That's what they call it, the product archives. So go ahead and click on product archives. Now Elementor does give us some default templates that we can use from. Um, however, you know, for this part, we're not gonna use their templates. Uh, these just don't really look well. Um, I, I think they're not as creative. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying, I think the templates that I made look a lot better than this. So let's go ahead and upload the templates that we created. So here I'll click on imports 
select the file. And the one I use is the, uh, we'll use shot page three. I mean, there's, shot, there's four shot pages here. I'll just grab three, you know, why not? And here we have shot page three and I'll click on insert. All right, so this is the shot page three. And all you need to do here is you can go ahead and just design and customize this to, you know, whatever, whatever you wanna add. So you'll see right here that this is an edit menu anchor. And I'll just go ahead and just give you a quick overview about this. So a menu anchor. Let's say, for example, you want someone to scroll to a specific part of the page when they click a button, right? You'll go ahead and put in like a number, right? So a number sign and then maybe 56 or something like that. Now over here, you will then change this to 56. So that means if they click on this button, it will then drag them down to the shop page. So that's what I did right there. I added in this menu anchor. So when they click on shop right away, it automatically takes them down here where they can just go ahead and start viewing the products. Also on the left side, you've noticed how we added in the product categories. We added a filter by price. So over here we have uh, product categories, right? Product categories. So we use the product categories and also the filter by price. That allows people to filter by price. And uh, yeah, so you can kind of, add specific elements or widgets to this page if you choose to do that. So I hope you guys enjoy this shop page. You know, we did create four for you all. So on the demo website here, uh, this is the current shop page and it just looks better when there's more products. Now, also you might notice how these categories have images. If you go to your products and you go to categories, uh, you'll then see a list of your product categories. From here, you'll click on edit and you can actually assign an image to that specific um, category. So for example, right here, we'll just add in a category or an image like that, and then we'll update it. And then from there, when they see that specific category on your website, it will then display. So that's how we achieved uh, that specific style and look. We added images to each product category just to give it some more design and decor because um, you know it's a really nice looking shop page. We just wanted to really emphasize it and just make it look as good as possible. Now let's say for example, you wanna add another shop page on your store for maybe a different product category, right? Let's do that. So you guys can go ahead on your own free time and just go through the shop pages, add whatever you want. Uh, again, we have created uh, a, a few for you guys. So we do hope you guys enjoy these uh, free uh, shop pages. But uh, let's go ahead and just go back here before we go on to the next section. Let's just publish this. So here I'll publish it and I wanna add a condition. So for example, right here, this is gonna be our shop page and that's it. That's pretty much all we have to do. And then click on save and close. And now we can go ahead and go back to our website right here. And now if we go to the shop page you will then see that this is our new custom shop page. Now, whenever you create products, automatically they will be displayed right here. Now, there are some few touches that you might need to do, and this is controlled by the theme. So for example, uh, on the theme, you might need to change this to a specific um, a, a color, just because I don't want people to say, this wasn't what you showed me in the demo. <laughs> you know. So under the global, under the color section, you can actually change the color palette here to black. And that should change all of the buttons here uh, to that color. So that's how we achieve that. So in the theme customizer, if you're using the widgets, you will need to go ahead and adjust the theme color to kind of match that style. So now let's say, for example, we created our shop page, right? However, we also have different product categories. Maybe you wanna add in a different page for different product categories. For example, if I click on jackets here, it's actually going to revert us to the old default uh, a category page because we haven't assigned a product category page to these specific products. So we can do that for all of the product categories, or you can go ahead and assign a specific shop page for every single product category and be as customizable as you want. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and go to our dashboard here and we'll go back to our theme builder and let's go to try it now again. And from here, we're gonna to go to product archives and just click on plus under product archives. Now, instead of using these templates, we'll go ahead and use the templates that I provided you all. So let's go ahead and import one of those templates, select file, and we'll just use, uh, I don't know, shop page, shop page four this time, why not? All right, and then I will insert shop page four at the bottom. 
Okay, so we have shop page four, and this is going to be our new shop category page. However, there is one thing that you need to do in order to modify this layout to meet your specific needs. We first need to click on the products here, and we need to actually add the category to this page. So this is going to be the jackets category, right? So over here, we have include by term, and we're going to enter in jackets. Jackets, product categories, jackets, there we go. So what this means is whenever you add products to the jacket category, all of those products will be displayed right here for you guys. So it'll automatically sync up to your store and it will automatically upload those products to the correct page, all right? So let's go ahead and click on publish here. And now we're going to add a condition. So now it says all product archives. However, we don't want product archives. We wanna have product categories this time. And I wanna select jackets, right? Cause jackets is our uh, product category for this specific page or whatever. So here we'll click on save and close. Now let's go ahead and go back to our websites. And first let's just go to the shop page, right? And let's clear the cache, make sure, uh, you know, make sure everything refreshed. Now let's say for example, we are on this page, right? And now we'll click on jackets. We will then see that this is our new jacket page and all of the products that we create for jackets will be displayed right here automatically. So you can mix and match shop pages or you can use the same shop page for your entire website and then maybe just change the title to jackets or to uh, shoes or whatever for each specific product category. I did that last year, but this year I decided to actually just create four different shop pages just in case you wanna have some diversity over your shop pages. So now that we know how to create a custom shop page and a custom product category page, let's move on to the next section and create a custom product page. Let's go back over here to the dashboard and now let's create a custom product page. So let's go under templates and theme builder. I'll click on try it now. So next we'll create a single product. So here we have single products and we'll click on the plus icon. And here they give us some templates to choose from. And these are actually not bad, but uh, the fact that they're only cupcakes just kind of makes them uh, weird. But I'll just go ahead and just give you a visual example of how to create your own custom product page. And then we'll use the demo again and I'll dissect it and explain how I did everything. So the first thing I wanna do is create a two column row, right? And now that we have the um, theme builder open for their products, we now have new elements. So for example, we have the breadcrumbs, which are these right here. So I'll go ahead and just add in some breadcrumbs, right? Some breadcrumbs. Next, I'm gonna add the product title. So this is the title of your product, right? So men's jacket, it does give you a good visual. Next, I'll enter the price. So here we have the product price. So this is the price of the product. And then we need to add some description, right? So over here, let's click on this and we'll find the product description. So the short description, I'll actually put that above the price. And then below that, we'll add in the add to cart button. So this is the add to cart. We can also add in the product rating. So product rating, maybe we'll put that uh, right there. So if you do have ratings, uh, they'll be displayed right there. And remember, you can adjust all of this, like the star color, the fonts, and everything else. But I'm just giving you the overall structure. Next, I wanna enter in the uh, metadata. I believe that's what it's called, right? The metadata. Like this is like the category and the SKU number and all that stuff. And on the right side, I want to insert the featured image. So let's click on these dots. And here we have product image. So this is going to be the image of the actual product. Now, one thing is that uh, this is too close to the top of the screen. So under the edit section, we'll click on the advanced tab and then we'll add in some padding here to the top. So make sure to unlink this and let's add some padding here to the top. I don't know, maybe hundred. I think hundred is good, right? And then we'll also add maybe some to the bottom. We'll add like 50. All right, cool. So now that we have this, this looks pretty good. And then maybe below here, you can even add in the Elementor widgets. Uh, for example, you can see on uh, this page, uh, we just added like a, a social icons. So if you wanna add in social icons, you can do that. Drag that there. And then maybe you can add in like a, an image of like your, uh, 
you know, shoppers approved or something or you know whatever you want to add in. But yeah, that's that. Now in this next section, I want to add in uh, some additional information and also the upsells. So here we have additional information, or we can even enter in product data tabs, product data tabs, and that also display additional information. And then below that, we can enter in the upsells, right? Which are recommended other products. All right, cool. So that's pretty much it. At this point, this is a custom product page and you can customize everything. So you can drag in elements, you can mix and match elements, you can change the background color to anything that you want. You can even use a gradient, you know, uh, and this can be your new product page. So that's just an example of how to create one from scratch. But I'll go ahead and clear that. Now, once you're ready, you can go ahead and click on publish. So now I want to assign this specific product page to our current products. So for add a condition, we can select products or we can even do a custom uh, product category. So for example, products in specific categories, we can create a uh, template for that. But I'm just gonna, you know, just select products and I'm not gonna get too crazy. I just think that we should only have one layout for all of the products and I'll click on save and close. Now let's go ahead and test this out. So I'll open up my website in a new tab. I'll click on shop and I will click on any product. And there you go. So now we have our custom product page and it looks great. Of course, all we need to do here is change the fonts and the colors, but everything is appearing. Everything looks really good. So we have our description. Now we don't have the additional upsells and that's probably because we don't have enough products on our, on our uh, e-commerce websites. But once you added more products and you assign them, they will display at the bottom, very similar to this right here. You'll see at the bottom, uh, we have our related products. So just make sure to add in upsells and then the upsell products will be displayed at the bottom of the page. Now let's say for example, all right, Daryl, this looks nice, but uh, I wanna use one of the templates. I'm glad you guys asked, well, let, let's use a template. We'll, we'll delete all of this and uh, we'll use one of Daryl's templates. So I'll click on add a template and I will insert this. Next, I'll click on select file and I'm just going to select, um, we have two, right? Uh, I'll just select the first one. Okay, and this is our product page. Now I know it looks a little weird, uh, but that's just because there's nothing to propagate yet. But uh, here we have the product title, right? We have the product rating, we have the product images, and then the product price. We have the short description, so that will uh, display here. And then we also have the add to cart and then the product meta. Right here we have the product images. Now you might notice that this section right here is grayed out. So you'll see that this whole section is grayed out. We grayed out specific sections because on mobile devices, it just doesn't display well. So for example, let's say you have a section that just doesn't fit well with mobile devices, yet you feel like it looks good on desktop. I'm gonna click on edit the intersection and under the advanced tab, we'll go to responsive. So you'll see here how we hid this on the desktop, yet it only displays on tablet and mobile. So you can basically hide specific sections for specific devices, just in case you feel that it's not really suitable for like either the computer or for tablet or mobile. But uh, that's how we created this section. It's a three column row. Uh, we mix and match elements using some of the elements from the homepage. And then we use this uh, short description and then we added in this icon list here at the bottom. And if we scroll down here, uh, we added the additional tabs, right? The product data tabs. And then here we added the product related. So let's go ahead and assign this to our uh, page. So I'll go to display conditions. And I wanna add this to all of the products. And then I'll just find any product. It doesn't matter which one I select because uh, the product template will be assigned to all of the products. And there you go. So now we have the product here. We have the title, the price, everything looks really clean. It looks really nice. So I do hope you guys enjoy this product page. Um, here's the description. And then also if you do have upsells, they will be displayed right there. You can feel free to take the upsells out or you can add anything you want in there. So that's how you guys can create a custom product page for your products on your e-commerce website. All right, party people, I hope you guys enjoyed that part of the video. Hopefully it wasn't too boring, but now you know how to fully customize your shop and also your product pages as well. Feel free to use any of these templates to help get you guys started with your e-commerce websites. 
Now let's go ahead and move on to the next section where we're going to talk about the WooCommerce settings. So the Elementor Theme Builder allows you to build really nice shop pages and product pages on your e-commerce website. So now that we talked about the Elementor Theme Builder, let's move on to step six, where we'll be talking about the WooCommerce settings. The WooCommerce settings is where we adjust our shipping, our tax, and also we, we can add coupon codes and all sorts of stuff. I'll also be showing you how to implement payment gateways onto your e-commerce website so you can start accepting credit card payments on your website. You guys ready? Let's get started. Okay, so in this part of the video, I'll be explaining how to adjust the WooCommerce settings. So I'll be going through tax, shipping, and also how to accept payments on your e-commerce websites. So first let's go ahead and go to our dashboard and we're going to go to the WooCommerce setting options. So WooCommerce and click on settings. So I did just get this notice. I guess they moved coupons around. So I'm going to remove this coupon menu. Uh, they added coupons somewhere else, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So I'll click on settings here. First, let's enter in some general information about your store. So where is the store located? If you are a brick and mortar store, then you wanna go ahead and select a location based off where you're from. Now, where are you selling to? You have a few options here. You can sell to all the countries, you can sell to all the countries except or sell to specific countries. Now, since I'm a business in the United States, uh, I want to sell to specific countries only. And here you can list a list of the countries you want to sell to. So for example, if you only want to sell to United States, you can say, I want to sell the United States. And then also I want to sell only to Canada, right? Canada and also Mexico because they are the closest to my shop. And here you have shipping locations. Now, if you want to ship to specific countries or all the countries, you can select that here as well. So I'm gonna say, you know what? I wanna to ship to specific countries only. So I wanna only ship to the countries that I can sell to, right? I mean, that makes the most sense. So I'll put, uh, we'll put Canada here. Canada, and I'll select that. So I can sell only to these countries and then I can ship to only these countries. Now, if someone tries to buy something that is not in these countries, they will be blocked. And this is a good idea because if someone really far away, maybe from the United States, like in, uh, I don't know, Lithuania or something, they try to buy one of our products, that shipping is just way too much to deal with. So I just choose not to uh, do business with them. So that's why you'd want to select specific countries. And then here, we'll go ahead and scroll down. You wanna make sure that you enable taxes and also enable the use of coupon codes because I'll be showing you later how to set that up. And then scrolling down, we have the dollar, right? The currency, you can select your currency here. I'll leave mine as dollar and then click on save changes. This notice is really annoying guys and there's nothing I can do about it. Basically, they're just letting me know that coupons moved over here to marketing. And for some reason, they just keep displaying this notice. So just, just bear with me. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, but now let's go to tax. So next, let's click on products. From the product section, you can change the measurements and you can also enable reviews on your products if you choose to do that. And that's really up to you. If you want users to vote on your products, you can do that. Uh, we're gonna skip tax for now and we're gonna go to shipping. We'll come back to tax a little bit later. All right, now the first thing that we're going to have to do is we need to add a shipping zone. So basically, what do you want people to pay for specific shipping zones? So let's add a shipping zone. And this one, I'll just put to United States for this shipping zone, United States. And for the region, this is going to be the US. So for me, what I'm saying here is this is going to be the cost for shipping in the United States. And I will add a shipping method. Now we have a flat rate, free shipping or local pickup. For this example, I'll select flat rate and click on add a shipping method. Next, we need to apply a price for the flat rate. So how much does this cost? Well, let's click on edit and we have the flat rate, right? And is this taxable? I'm gonna put no. And then the flat rate for shipping in the United States is $5. And then I'll click on save changes. So now you'll see that we have United States as our shipping zone. And then we also have this other option, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, you notice here how we don't have Mexico or Canada. So we need to add them to this because we allowed shipping to Mexico and Canada. So let's click on add a shipping zone. And for this section, I'll do Mexico and Canada. Why not? This will be Mexico and also Canada. 
And now I will add in a shipping method, a flat rate fee. And we're gonna charge them, I don't know, what should we charge them? Let's charge them 10 bucks. So they're gonna be charged $10 for shipping. That is not taxable and I'll click on save changes. Okay, now let's take a look at our shipping zones again. All right, so at this point, you can see what's going on. We're, USA is being charged $5, and then Mexico and Canada are being charged $10. Now, let's say, for example, you are selling in Nevada, and somebody from Nevada buys your product, right? Maybe you don't want to even charge them shipping because the shipping fee will be a lot less. So let me show you all how to assign free shipping for specific regions. So I'll click on add a shipping zone. And for the zone name, I'm gonna put Nevada. For the regions, we're gonna select Nevada here. And then I will add a shipping method. And here I'm gonna select free shipping. Let's click on add a shipping method. Then I'll click on edit under the free shipping. So free shipping requires what? We can set specific conditions for free shipping. For example, a minimum order amount, that means the user must spend at least $50 on our store. If they hit $50, then we will give them free shipping. You can also do a minimum order or a coupon or both. It's really up to you. We'll create coupons a little bit later, but uh, you can create coupons for free shipping. But I'll just select a minimum order amount of $5. And then click Save Changes. All right, now let's go ahead and go back to our shipping zone here. All right, so now let's clarify. So people in the United States will be charged $5, right? People in Canada and Mexico will be charged $10 for shipping. However, people in Nevada will get free shipping if they spend a little bit of money on our store. Now let's say, for example, somebody buys something maybe on the tip of Mexico or maybe uh, somewhere around the country that we didn't set the options for and there was some sort of accident, right? we can select the locations not covered by your other zones. So let's click on this right here. Now for flat rates, I'll click on edits. And I wanna select a cost of $8. So what this means is, let's say for example, someone buys something on our store that we didn't assign, they will be charged $8 as a flat rate. Because sometimes accidents happen, you know? Sometimes it does happen. Let's go ahead and click on shipping zones. And that's it. So our shipping is now configured. Now shipping can be very dynamic. You know, you can ship based off of weight, off of quantity, and there are other plugins like the WooCommerce Table Rate Shipping plugin. And I have a full tutorial on that in the description below. It's about an hour long and it talks about how you can ship based off of weight, off of quantity, off of uh, dimensions. I mean, it gets really, really advanced, but uh, this is kind of like the basics of shipping. So that's how you guys can kind of assign shipping to your e-commerce website. Next, we have accounts and privacy in here. You can allow guest checkouts, or you might want to allow users to create an account on their My Account page or during checkouts. Also, you have account erasure requests, and this is like a removing personal data from your store. And then also inserting your privacy policy and your uh, checkouts uh, forms here as well. So that's what that is referring to. So next we have email notifications, and I did recommend the plugin called Yaymail, which can help you customize your emails for your e-commerce website. Instead of using the bare HTML, because uh, that's really not suitable for beginners, and most people will have no idea what they're doing. So uh, I recommend using the Yaymail plugin in order to customize your email forms. So the next step is we're going to install some plugins for our e-commerce store, like payment gateways, and also a plugin to automate our tax. Now, if you're in the United States, we can have automated taxes on our websites, yet we can also set specific rates uh, depending on what country we're dealing with, and I'll talk about that in just a bit. But first, let's install a few plugins. So let's go to Plugins and go to Add New. And under Search Plugins, we're first gonna enter in Stripe. So we're going to install some payment gateways, and we're also going to install some plugins for tax. So this is the plugin, it is called the WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. Go ahead and click on Install and Activate. All right, and then go back to Plugins and Add New. And now we're going to enter in PayPal. Just type in PayPal. 
Now, PayPal is probably the most accepted payment merchant in the world, so you can be using PayPal from any country. Now, I do not recommend the new extension WooCommerce created. Before this video, I tested it out for about a day and there was just too many glitches and errors with it. And as you guys can tell, people are just not happy about it. And I really just don't even think it works. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this plugin here. It is called the PayPal Express Checkout by Web Toffee. So let's go ahead and install and activate this plugin. Okay, and we need to install one more plugin. So click on add new. And we're gonna type in WooCommerce shipping. WooCommerce shipping. And this is the plugin that we need. It is the WooCommerce shipping and tax. And it does have a lot of active installs. So it has 1 million active installs. So go ahead and activate and install this as well. Now, when you install the WooCommerce shipping and tax, you will need to sign up with Jetpack. Jetpack is a free service that will automate the tax calculation and also help you print out shipping labels for your products. So let's click on activate Jetpack and connect. All right, so you might need to make an account with Jetpack and I already have an account. So just go through the process of creating a free account with Jetpack and then it'll bring you back to your dashboard. All right, so now that we have those installed plugins, we are now ready to go back to the WooCommerce settings. So let's go to WooCommerce and click on settings. All right, now we'll click on tax. So if you are in the United States, we can now add automated taxes. Now these are provided by an API from taxjar.com and taxjar.com will go ahead and automatically configure the tax rates for whatever store you are working in. So you'll see right here how it says your tax rates and settings will automatically be configured for Nevada, United States. Now, even if you are in another country and you have a client that you are uh, working with, you can use this plugin to help automate their taxes for them. However, let's just say, for example, I don't want to have automated taxes. And also people watching this from other countries might want to create their own tax rate. So let's do that. Here, I'll click on standard rates. So the first option is country code. Now you can find your country code by just clicking on that link and it'll give you all the country codes. So uh, you have some for Aruba, which is AW. You have them for Bangladesh, India, Cambodia, uh, Costa Rica, and here are all of the country codes. So no matter what country you're selling from, you can just insert the country code there and that will assign the tax rates. So yeah, that's where you can find the country codes. However, I'm just going to enter in US for United States. Now, if you're in the United States, you can actually set a specific tax rate for specific states as well. Now, depending on where you're from, you need to either charge tax based off where you are or where you are shipping to. But I am not a legal expert on this, so you might want to consult your accountant about that and all that uh, mumbo jumbo. But uh, let's just say, for example, I want to have a 5% tax rate for the United States. Do you want to add tax on top of the shipping? Do you also want to compound that as well? Well, I'm just going to say no. So I don't want a tax on top of shipping. And then I will click on save changes. All right, cool. So now we have a tax rate for the United States. But let's say, for example, we also want to have a tax rate for Mexico. And then the tax rate for Mexico is going to be 8%. And I don't want that to be on top of shipping. And then I will uh, save the changes. All right, so now that we have a tax rate of 8% for Mexico and also a tax rate of 5% for the United States. So this is how you can assign specific tax rates for specific locations. And you can even go in more detail and go based off of states and even zip code or specific cities if you wanna do that. But that's just an overview of how you can add taxes to your e-commerce website. Next, let's integrate some payment gateways. So let's accept credit cards on our website. Now, there are two websites that I recommend for this. This is Stripe and also uh, PayPal as well. Now, if you're in the United States or Europe or even South America, uh, Stripe is accepted everywhere. So first, go ahead and go to Stripe.com. Now, Stripe.com is a free service. It's free to sign up and it does not cost you anything at all to get started. There is a transaction fee of around 2.9% but I believe that is standard for all merchants. In fact, uh, Shopify charges at least 5%. So you are getting a large discount if you use WooCommerce. Also make sure to sign up with PayPal. Now with PayPal, you will need to have a business account. 
So there was a recent uh, policy change where personal accounts can no longer accept payments on e-commerce websites, and you must have a business account in order for this to work. And there is a monthly fee for PayPal. So uh, if you want the free alternative, you can go with Stripe. But just remember that uh, PayPal is accepted worldwide. So uh, Stripe is only accepted in specific regions. But uh, you might want to add both to your website just so you can accept payments everywhere. So first, let's add Stripe to our e-commerce websites. Now we'll go over here to Payments. And since we installed the plugin, we will now have some options for a Stripe. So this is it, the Stripe credit card. And then here I'll click on Manage. Now Stripe is probably the easiest to get set up with. I mean, it's you just have to copy and paste, uh, copy and paste stuff and that's pretty much it. So we want to enable Stripe. And then here we have the test mode and then we also have live mode. So let's say for example, you wanna run test transactions, you'll click on enable test mode. If you wanna enable live real transactions, you will uncheck that and now this will accept live payments on your e-commerce website. So go ahead and go through the process of creating an account with Stripe. It does take a little bit of time. You'll have to create an account. You'll have to link your bank account. They don't really ask for any sensitive information except of a place to transfer the money to because uh, they're holding your money, so they need a place to transfer it. And once you are done with that, it'll bring you to your Stripe dashboard. So this is my current dashboard and you'll see that you have payments here and it'll just give you all the information that you need uh, about your store. But first, let's click on this test mode here at the top, right? Now this is test mode. And for developers, I'll click on this developer tab. On the left side, we're going to see API keys. Now this is the publishable key and also the secret key that we need to copy and paste this onto our e-commerce website. So first I'll go ahead and take this publishable key and I will paste that. But first let's make sure this is in test mode. All right, there we go. And then for the secret key, it will reveal this and I'll copy the secret key and then I'll just paste it in there. Next, we need to add a test webhook secret. So just go ahead and click on this link right here that says Stripe account settings, and it'll bring you to this page right here. So next we have webhook endpoints. Now all you need to do is just copy and paste this. I'll copy this and then click on this link and this link will open up a new browser in your window. So it'll bring you to the developer section. First, let's add an endpoint. So click on add an endpoint and then paste the URL they gave you right here. And we're going to basically say why we're using this webhook. So this is used to capture payments. Cap, whoa, 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 here we go. Capture payments. Next, we need to select an event. So select events. And this is going to be charge. So we're gonna click on charge. And I wanna select the uh, charge captured. So basically I'm saying uh, this is going to be used to charge credit cards and charge, uh, you know, so we make money. So what I wanna do next is scroll to the bottom and click on add events. And then we're done, so click on add endpoint. All right, next it'll say signing secret. So click on reveal. And this is what we need to copy and paste on our e-commerce websites. So we'll go back to test webhook secrets and then we'll paste it in there. Also, this is the statement descriptor. So when they buy something from your website, you might wanna tell them that this is your store, right? So this will be Daryl Designer Store. So this will appear on their credit card. And I wanna make sure this captures immediately. So we wanna charge them right away. Now this is also an inline credit card form. It's just another way to display the, um, the way to capture payment. So they do have two different forms you can use. Here we have enable payment requests. So you can use Apple Pay and also Google Pay if you prefer that, or you can disable those if you choose to. But I'll go ahead and scroll down here. And then I'll click on save changes. All right, so at this point, I think we're ready to run a test transaction. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and buy something on our store. And I'll just click on shop. I will add this to the cart. View the cart. Proceed to checkout. Now this is for test purposes only. So people have messaged me saying, hey Daryl, uh, you put your credit card on the, uh, you know, on the website, but you'll enter this for test mode enabled only. 
and then we'll scroll down. I will save this and click on place order. All right, cool. So this is the checkout page. Now this is the page that your customers will be brought to after they have purchased your product. You can always go ahead also and check your email and you will also get this thank you for your order where you will see the product that they have purchased and the price and the billing and the shipping address. Next, let's go to our Stripe account to see if the payment has been captured. Let's go over here and we have two payments successful. But a quicker way to look at this is just going to payments here and going to succeeded. And now you'll see that the $47 uh, payment has been captured and everything is working and is connected with Stripe. So that's how you can integrate Stripe with your uh, e-commerce website. Now, when you're ready to take live payments, all you have to do here is uncheck this test mode and then you'll go to developers and you'll do the same exact process. So go to API keys and then instead of copying and pasting the test, you will do this with the live. So let me go ahead and run you through that really quick before we jump into PayPal. So here is the payments for Stripe. So under the payments tab, we will then uncheck test mode. Now we're going to enter in the credentials for the live transactions. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this. Just make sure test mode is not enabled. And we will do the same exact process. Reveal the live key. And then also we're going to do this one more time. So I'm going to copy this. Open up these Stripe account settings. And then we're gonna do this one more time. I'll add an endpoint. Just to make sure you guys get it. I don't want you guys to be like, well, Daryl, you didn't show us how to do this for the live one, you know? <laughs> which which I do get, I get nasty comments sometimes, but I understand it can be frustrating, uh, you know, when, you, when people leave steps out, so. Uh, but this will just be uh, used to accept payments, right? And for the live events, we'll do the same exact thing. We'll click on charge and charge captured, and then click on add events and then add the endpoints. Once that's added, we will then reveal this and we will copy and paste this onto our website and we are done. So at this point, your website can now accept real live credit cards on your e-commerce website. And uh, guys, please don't buy anything. I get a lot of people who actually really use their credit cards and they buy stuff. I don't know if it's a joke or not, but people really spend money and I have to refund it. And it's like, it, like you know, it's just for total purposes. So please do not buy anything. Uh, so that's how you can integrate Stripe onto your e-commerce websites. And there's no monthly fee, it's all free. They just take a small transaction. Now let's integrate PayPal onto our e-commerce website. So let's click on the payments tab again and we'll scroll down and we're gonna find PayPal Express. Go ahead and click on manage. Now I do like this plugin a lot better than the, a lot better, does that make sense? A lot better? No, I, I like this plugin better than the default one because it's this was a lot easier. All you need to do here is just copy and paste your credentials. It's really, really easy to do this. So for the environments, let's just do live mode, right? And now it's saying get your API credentials. All you need to do is copy and paste your three APIs into these boxes and you are all ready to rock and roll. So let's click on the sandbox. Now you'll need to first log into your PayPal account so they can redirect you to the correct settings. So let's click on a login to dashboard and I will log into my PayPal account. All right, so this is my current PayPal account. You guys can see I got some, I got some cash there. We got seven, seven Gs. So we'll go to the WooCommerce settings. Now, uh, make sure that this is under live mode and uh, click on the live API credentials. Now, I'm gonna open this in a new tab. All right, and now it should redirect you to your API credentials. Now, all you need to do here is click on the show and then it'll show your username, it'll show your password and also your signature. So for example, for the username, I'll go ahead and copy this and then I will paste it right there. And then you'll do the same exact thing for the live API password and also the live API signature. Once you do that, you'll go to the bottom and then you will click on, there we go, save changes. And that's it. Now you can start accepting payments from PayPal on your e-commerce website. Now they do have a pro version. I'm not really sure if you wanna check it out, but if you guys do, I will leave a link to it in the description below of this video. So let's quickly summarize. We went through all the tabs. We went through the general, the tax, the shipping, the payments, the accounts. 
So I think at this point, you're a little bit more familiar. There are some other things that you wanna check out, like for example, your orders tab. So this is like the general overview about your order. So you'll see that we have this shipping information. You can change this to uh, pay pending payments or uh, processing or completed, whatever you want to set that to. And then you'll click on update and that'll kind of let your other admins know that, all right, the status is done. Uh, the product is now complete. Everything's good to go. Uh, also, if we scroll down here, you'll see the order notes, the price, you can add a private note, and also you can even refund the order right here by clicking on the refund button. And since this is now connected with the API, you'll just click on refund and it should refund the purchase. So that's how you know refunds are dealt with. People ask me about that quite a bit. Also, if you need help with shipping labels, you'll click on create a shipping label and it can actually help create a shipping label based off the dimensions and based off the origin of the address. Now this is probably set for another video guys. I'm not gonna go through the shipping labels because we can talk about this again for another hour and I wanna speed this video up as much as I can because I don't want this video to get too long, but uh, that's how you would uh, create shipping labels for your uh, e-commerce websites. You also have the reports and the reports will let you know about if someone has uh, purchased something on your site. You'll see that uh, you know we have some sales here it looks like this is being replaced by WooCommerce Analytics. Um, that's gonna be something new. So maybe when that comes out, I will talk about that. Now you'll see this marketing tab and they recently moved uh, the coupons to marketing. So just go ahead and click on marketing and coupons and we'll create our first coupon. So go ahead and give your coupon a name. I'll just put Daryl. Now, which kind of discount does this give? You can have a percentage discount a fixed dollar amount discount or a fixed product discount. So this is a dollar. So for example, this is a $10 off coupon. That's what the fixed cart discount means. However, if you wanna offer a percentage, this is now 50% off your entire order. And you can set this to allow free shipping and also give this an expiration date. So this expires on the 26th. The usage restrictions, you can have the minimum spend. So that means they must spend at least $25. And you can exclude this or enable this for specific products, for specific product categories, and so on. Usage limits. How many times can this coupon be used? Well, uh, I'll just say 100 times. How many times can this be used for a specific item? You can select that specific item there. Now also, how many times can a specific user <laughs> use this coupon? I'll just say like a two times, that's it. That's all you get, you know? And once you create your coupon, you'll click on publish. All right, so we have $100 in the cart and uh, here we can enter the coupon code of Daryl and then click on apply coupon code. Now this should apply a 50% discount to the product. And there you go. So now we have $50 off the coupon. So party people, that is the WooCommerce settings in a nutshell. Just go ahead and mess with the settings, but uh, overall, I think you'll get the hang of it. Now in this next section, I'll be showing you all how to market your e-commerce website and how to start making money with your site. Let's go. Now let's talk about how to market your e-commerce website so it can help you make money. I'll be breaking this section down into five different chapters and giving you steps for each chapter. Don't forget this blog post is available on my website, so feel free to refer to it at any time but I'll be talking about the most important steps to follow for each chapter. Chapter one, focus on your website optimization first. Don't rush to marketing strategies right away. If you ignore your website, then you're just wasting your money on marketing. You will not be able to convert anyone if your website isn't optimized properly. Ask yourself this question. If you bring 1 million visitors to your website tomorrow, what would they say? How many of them would actually buy something or would your customers leave because how your website looked? Step one, proofread your site's content. You might think you can get away with typos and grammar mistakes, but the worst thing that can happen is that you miss out on a sale just because you spelled something wrong. This happens. Just double check your website and make sure it looks good. Step two, make sure to link all of your social profiles for free engagement. What you can do to amplify the reach of your website is to bring all of your social profiles together and share your content on all of your networks as much as possible. This is a great way to build trust and establish your e-commerce website. Step three, start your on-page SEO. The on-page SEO is probably the most important factor when optimizing your website. Optimizing your website tells users what your website is all about and represents your business in the Google search engine. 
I do have two videos with Rank Math and Yoast that will show you how to submit your website to Google and also index your website in the Google search results for free. This is a must do for all e-commerce websites. Step four, capture emails. It's free money. Emails are a great way to communicate and sell to your audience that already have an interest in buying your products. Always add a subscribe box to your e-commerce website so you can remarket to those customers who are already interested in your products. I have a full video on email marketing with MailChimp and I will leave that in the description of this video. Step five, keep your website load time under two seconds. How dumb would it be if you lost money because your website was slow? Nearly 70% of customers admit that page speed affects their buying decision. In fact, the probability of bounce rates increases, which means people leave your website by 32% if the website loads from one to three seconds longer. Make sure your web pages are under three megabytes for each page for optimal performance. Chapter two, the golden rules before creating a marketing campaign. Rule number one, start with free organic options. It's very easy to get sidetracked and start spending money on marketing campaigns that you have little experience with. Relax and start with all the free organic options first before you think of spending any money. We will talk more about this later. Rule number two, growing your business takes time. You should never expect to make millions of dollars overnight. It's unlikely that you'll be able to gain tons of traffic and hit six figures in a week. Growing an e-commerce website takes time, but as long as you're consistent with your business, the sales will slowly pour in. Rule number three, avoid burnout and take breaks. Although it's important that you continue marketing your e-commerce website, that does not mean you should do it 24 seven. If you're feeling drained and burned out, take a break. Your website will always be there and you want a strong head to manage your store rather than feeling burned out. Next, let's jump into chapter three, how to start your organic trafficking marketing campaigns the right way. Step one, create and establish your social presence. Spend the time to create social profiles for your e-commerce business. Completely fill out all the options available to establish your social presence. That includes all social networks that you think are relevant to your business. Remember, even if there is no one active on your page or engaging with your business at the start, that's perfectly fine. The point here is to show that your business is alive. Also, you might wanna create an active community that will attract the attention of other customers. Step two, find as many classified and listing websites as possible. Listing your website and classified and listing websites would give people who are interested in what you're offering a chance to find out more about your e-commerce websites. This also helps give your website more exposure and helps users at the same time. Step three, register on review websites for higher exposure. Review websites have high domain authority and appear high in the Google search results. This is why you should take advantage of them and list your website. When a review website lists your website in their directory, you also gain high quality backlinks that helps boost your online presence. Step four, start content marketing on your blog. The main advantage of content marketing is that it has long-term benefits. When you create quality content for your blog, search engines will naturally boost up your ranking and organic traffic will start to increase in the long run. This is the easiest way to make sales. Remember, there is no better traffic than organic traffic. Step five, sign up with affiliate programs to get people to sell your products for you. Affiliate marketing is finding websites that would want to promote your product or service in exchange for a commission. For example, if you're selling a product for $100 on your e-commerce website and a blog recommended that product and converted the sale, the partner referring that product would get a commission of 5%. You would receive $95 and the referring affiliate would get $5. You can also set your own commission rates as well. This is a great way to get established blogs with high authority to start talking and promoting your e-commerce websites. And this can ultimately help boost the popularity of your e-commerce store. You can find affiliates by going to sharesale.com, cj.com, and also Clickbank. I'll leave those links to those websites in the description of this video. Step six, negotiate a referral system with other websites. A good strategy that more e-commerce websites are doing is reaching out to websites that sell related products or services and offer discounts for each other. For example, let's say you're selling men's dress shoes. Men who purchase dress shoes might also be interested in briefcase. Since you can't sell briefcases for whatever reason, then you should reach out to a briefcase website or business and offer to exchange links and even a coupon code to work with each other. Working with other websites to get backlinks and help get the word out for your e-commerce website is a great strategy on how to bring long-term sales for your business. Chapter four, paid marketing strategies. Now, once you have exhausted all possible means to market your store organically, then it's time to maybe consider using some paid marketing strategies. However, you should only consider paid marketing once you have made a 100% effort into all of the free methods as possible. Step one, off-page SEO. 
The truth is, you can do SEO yourself and avoid spending anything. But to be honest, on-page SEO takes a lot of time and effort, and you're better off paying someone to do it for you. As for finding someone to do this for you, it's quite simple. Go to freelancer.com or upwork.com. Then find an SEO company, preferably from India. Pick 10 to 15 keywords, including your business name. Negotiate the payments, and then wait for the results. I have more information on how much to spend and also what keywords to use on my website. Step two, influencer marketing. Influencer marketing is all about product reviews. Influencer marketing is when a popular figure talks about you or your products and shares it with their audience. This is an ideal tactic and is often very effective. You may need to look for someone who is well known in your target market. You can also check influencer marketing platforms like Upfluence, Heapsy, and Mighty Scout to find an influencer that best fits your needs. Step three, Google Display Network Campaigns. This is great for branding. Ever been to a blog and seeing those image banners on websites that recommend a service or product that you may have visited? This type of marketing refers to the space on websites that you can find display marketing for all sorts of things. Google will show these images on random blogs throughout the internet and is a great way for branding. Google display ads are pretty cheap and they're great for branding purposes. Step four, Facebook ads, but start slow. Facebook ads can be very inexpensive and is a great way to reach customers that are interested in your brand. Facebook allows you to search based off interest and demographic data. Just don't spend too much money. Start with a budget of $5 a day just to get started. Next, let's move to chapter five, and we're gonna talk about marketing platforms that you might wanna avoid. Let's talk about how to protect yourself. Remember, these advertising platforms don't care about you. This is business. So let's talk about some platforms with poor conversions that you might wanna avoid. Number one, banner ads on websites. These are those annoying banners that you see on the sidebars of websites. People who use these ads are usually from large corporations with massive budgets to waste. Banner ads have the worst click-through rates, usually less than 1%. There are just better ways to spend your money. Number two, avoid Google AdWords and go with Google Merchants. Most beginners burn through their budget in seconds and waste hundreds of dollars with Google AdWords. It's a quick way to go through your budget without getting any conversions. If you want to run some ads on Google, you should better use Google Shopping ads instead. These will display your products, the price, and reviews in the search engine. It's a more visual way to advertise, and I do have a video on how to set this up, and I'll leave that video in the description of this video. Number three, just avoid Twitter. I do believe some businesses should have Twitter accounts. It's a great way to communicate with their audience to let them know about announcements and updates. However, when referring to paid marketing, Twitter has some of the lowest ROIs in the market. Out of the most marketing studies, Twitter's had the lowest return on investment compared to any social website on the internet. Twitter is mainly geared for war and people like to rage and rant on this platform. It's just not the best place to spend your money with such low ROIs. And finally, let me give you my personal opinion. Should you list your products on marketplaces? I know it's tempting to go the easy route and just list your products on marketplaces like Amazon. You may think it's not a bad idea and you don't stand to lose anything by doing this. But the truth is these marketplaces are very competitive. You will find yourself racing to the bottom with prices because large sellers who buy direct from manufacturers can offer super competitive prices. For example, Amazon will charge you a 15% fee for selling electronics or watches. So if you're selling a similar product at $100, the most you can make is 85 bucks. But also remember, you need to include shipping, which makes it even worse. Now, the main reason why I don't like these websites is because they hide you and they hide your brand. They suppress your store and don't give you visibility because users may then just go visit your website instead of buying from Amazon. I think you should focus on you and your store instead. So don't start with marketplaces and just focus on building your brand. All right, congratulations on your e-commerce website. See, I told you guys this stuff was easy, but man, we spent weeks making this video. Uh, we were going back and forth with the design and uh, with my designers, we were like changing images and fixing stuff. Uh, so I really hope that this e-commerce template really helped you guys out. Also, I really hope this video brought a lot of value. You know, we also made this marketing guide with our content writer and we really went step by step to really, uh, you know, nail everything to make sure it was perfect. Also, let me know how I did, you know, was this tutorial fast? Was it too slow? Was it all over the place? Let me know in the comments below. I, I don't take it personal, guys. I really don't take anything personal over the internet. Uh, also, make sure to like this video. And uh, until then, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.